I messed it up. <laughs> There's no what water happened? in the bog. Bruh. So you just try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, well, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, episode 48, where uh, you should not dry hit uh, your bongs or uh, <laughs> any water pipes. Uh, definitely not good for your throat and or lungs. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the purpose of, uh, <laughs> of, of doing it is because it's the uh, quote-unquote healthiest way, you know, just... Do you do your two uh, quick rips for the day and uh, be smacked with the most minimal amount of smoke in or in your lungs, you know, being around your face, you know, all that stuff. But yeah, dry hits kind of, that's like, um, it feels like you're lighting a flame in your lungs sometimes, depending on how big of a hit that is. That is just, yeah, that, that, that was, <laughs> that was not I'll, great. I'll that one before. <laughs> uh, sometimes, I mean, shit. It's like, I can't say use anything, but maybe sometimes use anything rather than dry it. Like, if you really comes down to use Coke, <laughs> use fucking anything, bro. bro. The fact I say that, though, is because I've seen that. It's, what, is, is this a stupid question? What What if you, like, put, actually, nah, that's a stupid question, never mind. Could you by, put by the way, when I say Coke, it? I don't know. Uh, when I say Coke, I mean uh, Coca Cola, uh, not powder. And and, and you're yeah. So, so uh, j like, just 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 in case people were misconstrued there. Last uh, but, last resort. What about like a beer hit? So yeah, a beer hit. Yes. Uh, in fact, I think there's a few videos of that, which is disgusting. I literally have seen my friend. We we did what are the odds? Uh, one out of ten. She definitely should have did higher, but we normally do one out of ten. <laughs> and he lost, so we had to do. He had to take a bong root with Coke, like Coca-Cola, and uh, he drank it after. He took a sip. Uh, in the end, we strongly recommend that you don't put alcohol in your bong. Yeah, uh, yeah, d yeah, d yeah. That's, that's what Google Not only that, Yeah. Because uh, um, especially straight up alcohol, hell no. Just do, do not do that. Yeah, that is just not a good idea at all. Um but yeah, any sort of liquid that is not going to, uh, <laughs> just like, like, basically anything. Try to find some water, bro. Try, just, <laughs> I, try, I have the little mini water bottle. I always have a little water. It's always, you gotta stay hydrated anyway. So, I mean, always have a little water bottle. Uh, also, uh, remember Aldi and Lidl saves, uh, saves lives here. They, uh, they, they save lives. Shout out. That for real, like, why am, why am I saving close to 200 bucks compared to Food Lion, Giant, Shoppers, you know, like, it, it's trash. Like, like it, it, it is so trash that the price difference is that bad. <clears throat> Get your groceries at all the Lidl people. I think the only 100%. time I, yeah, the only time I go to Wegmans now was for their actual food, like the deli. I never shop at Wegmans anymore, hell no. That, that is robbery. Way too expensive. That is fucking robbery. Oh, in fact, I think it's on Wegmans themselves because you, when you walk into Wegmans, it's like this shit is too nice, man. What? Why is? It, why am I getting theming in a grocery store, bro? Like that's what I'm <laughs> feeling like. Like, <laughs> yeah, Wegmans is gas. Their food is. I haven't been in a while, yeah, but their bakery is good too. Yeah, exactly. So I literally just skip everything when I walk in, go straight to the right. No, no, it's in the right, but go straight to the right. You see me as the floating dog. In all the old cartoons, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm towards that bakery. Yeah, pre appreciate <laughs> you. Uh, but yeah, uh, things coming up. We got a few things. We got the Midwest twist, a small little thing uh, for a Black Coast of Society. Uh, really, it's just gonna be uh, me, Will, Mike, and uh, maybe one other 
member there. It's going to be a small little mini meetup, but I cannot wait to see all the homies. Uh, buzz bars wise, though, uh, Wobble on that John, I'm not sure if entries ended, but there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Steel Force ERT, uh, the mm -hmm. ERT, ERT, you know, uh, and uh, it confirmed trimless, confirmed slapper rides coming your way. So, y'all, come on. Go, if Sounds you're, good. Now, not only if you need to go get my Iron Menace, you know, Steel Force will be a certified slapper, it sounds like. So go ahead and get on that, and especially with the Buzz Bars fam. Uh, but a month, or actually about a three weeks after that, will be Gerbilsburg, which I'm still trying to go to. Uh, June 7th and 9th. Uh, this is the girls' events for Buzz Bars, but not girls specific. So go on up. Go on up there. Especially if it's your first one, it's going to be a fun time. I know Steel Curtain is... Uh, not going to be open for the year, but <clears throat> I think uh, Phantoms Revenge will be ju just good enough. And depending on the days you go, there will be Phantoms Revenge ERT along with Thunderbolt ERT. So no needing to wait for a random somebody to ride with if you're by yourself. You got all Buzz Boss to cuddle with on the ride. So good looks, good looks. And I mean, Top Thrill, Top Thrill 2 stumble. I think Onion 287 is coming up the month after. Uh... So yeah, things. The uh, live cast, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, shit. But, um, fuck, what else is happening? I think I think now it's just fucking because, really, is a trip stuff, which I haven't really gotten on a trip. I just me and Alex went to KD recently. Uh, actually, just let me see, make sure I didn't go on anything. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I feel like we remember that. But no. Um, last thing tripwise I did was really Iron Menace, yeah, and all that stuff. So, um, basically, uh, I went to KD. Let's get all this out of the way real quick. And uh, on that Sunday, real quick, after all the storms, and uh, yeah, it was the most dead I've ever seen the park in a while. Uh, but ooh, it was, it was the storms, really. Like, <laughs> yeah. Really pushed everyone out. If look, I, I told Alex and said it looked like I was like in my Planet Coaster Park with no guests in it at some points. That is that's a how ghost that was. Yeah, uh, like even train. in Jungle X. Oh uh, yeah, even in Jungle X, it was like. Wow. <laughs> so that's why I was. We were there. Were sending empty rows on Reptilian, bro. I was like. <laughs> um, wow. speaking of which, uh, they moved and made more of a maze of Jungle X. So yeah, the I should add like a jungle like the Jungle X report. Like a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Like a Lex report. Yeah, because like we're basically like some of the main people covering that shit right now. It's like. Did you um take a look at the construction? Yeah. So um. Oh, uh, today? Was there something today? I wasn't able to go. No, no, su Sunday. When you were there. Oh yeah, yeah. So they moved a lot of the pathing. So instead of you being right next to Timbili, now uh they moved you to where you couldn't walk before. So uh. Now you're basically closer to the old volcano station, uh, the old one, and you see literally in the midway like where some of the support will be. Uh, I'll send you the video. I'll put in the put in the ship posting. But basically, though, as I'm walking through, I see the uh, like you can clearly see where one of the main elements will be go over the midway uh, as they're preparing for that. Um, yeah. There's a more uh, footers placed. There's no supports yet, but. Um, that's what I was wondering if they poured footers. But yeah, it looks like there's more uh, circular ones and stuff like that. Uh, I'm actually, I'm looking at Clint Novak's recent video to see uh, what he was showing. Yeah, shout out to uh, Clint. The footers. Can't mess with my KD, by the way. Always wearing the propeller hat. Yeah, it looks like they got some uh, square ones and some circular ones. Yeah, I wonder why B&M be doing the mix now, because Iron Man just does the same thing. But, uh, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jungle X is definitely going to be uh, having a lot of movement throughout the year, but how... <laughs> it's like Maze Runner right now, I'm not going to lie. Like, getting back there and on a gross Saturday, that's going to be hell. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be trash, but it was a great time. Uh, going through their I about, five cooking. Well, think about like Han. Oh God! Unless they, I, I think it'll be open they, up by. You know, like, I think that's what yeah, the hope that's is. Yeah, I was wondering because I get some more progress done. You know, because Airtime Mike was saying they're trying to get it done by September, 
and that makes sense because Haunt starts in September, you know, so, I mean, there, there is, like, Tumbili's open and Reptilian's open, but it's not like they have a maze back there, yeah, uh, but still, you get the most crowds during Haunt, so yeah, you should definitely have that opened up to some capacity, and honestly, not a bad way to market the new ride, because, oh shit, this is, oh, this is here, and it's, well, yeah, like, and they, they have a scare zone back there in way too. Yeah, you have to walk all the way back. Well, actually, do they still do a scare zone back there? I don't know. Hold up. I don't remember. I think they... I want to say there was something you could walk through last year. Or maybe... I don't know. Did I did I even go to KD Haunt last year? I don't think I did. Because I don't remember the last time they had a but haunt the back there was for Flight of Fear. Well, well, not a haunt, but just like a scare zone, a little maze. Yeah, they or had a scare maze, zone. But, uh, they definitely had zone. a scare zone. Yeah, but I will say that was for the per past two years the weakest scare zone easily. Mm -hmm. Um, it was never. It seems like it didn't have nearly the amount of <clears throat> actors that the other ones did. Uh, like, yeah. didn't feel nearly as populated, and uh, yeah, in the actual props were no, were kind of very uh skeletal in terms of just how much we're there yeah so yeah so they had grimwoods no vacancy fear trick-or-treat corn so yeah none of those were back there but they yeah. definitely had x site so you were saying green train is back oh it's back and oh, i have a story about that by the way so there's a new op and he, yeah. as we walked up uh he commented alex's outlaw run uh sure and then he could, and then he also wondered because there was nobody in the fucking park while we waited a whole train for Green Train. And then we're like, oh, Green Train, you know, it runs quicker, bro. It, it gives you a better ride. And then he comes back and yeah. says, oh, oh, what'd you hear that from? <clears throat> and he says, oh, an op that worked two years ago, bro. And he goes, probably wasn't true. And we're like, okay, bro. Okay, bro. Really? So all I got to say is the rides that we got after riding it, Blue Train this year. Shout on blue. I'm sorry, bro. Like if y'all get as on, it always is. if y'all get on <laughs> Twisted Timbers, this is the PSA. I don't want to hear nobody say, oh, oh, oh this is not that powerful. Look, 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 look. I, I, I want to. I don't mind when I hear, oh, it's too much because yeah, it, it's 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 ridiculous. Green train and now the ops. Every time he went there, bro, it feels like I'm at Hershey, baby. They be pulling up. They be pulling up, or the slight little tap. As soon as they see it's green, they see. It. They'll be like, "That looks like crazy room on you, buddy." But if you look back, if you're green, you're good. That's what I always say, baby. And oh my god, green! <laughs> I felt like that was 2022 again. Oh my goodness, the rides back to back were. That doing. is, that's really good to hear. Yeah, so very good to hear. Uh, I'm happy about that, uh, but Grizzly man, uh, shout outs to Jake underscore underscore Parks and Little Thuzivert, the little dot. Doozy dot vert uh, on IG or Instagram, but also known as Nick, because the homies we finally met up at Grizzly and we're basically whoring it the whole uh, last hour of the night. Because when it rains, you ride wooden coasters. You probably should because the running rails are slicker, the wheels are. You're gonna be getting so much crazier rides, man. And mm, how was it? <laughs> so all I'm gonna say is there's a reason why the guy rode a shockwave. Because they don't need two stand-ups in the park. That's just redundant. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, bro. It was a point where... <laughs> standing was... Uh, we were just saluting and standing. And getting yeets. <laughs> like, it gets to the point where the fan turn, you know, like... When you go through the tunnel, which the tunnel ejector hill now? Oh my god. Oh my god. But I imagine that was running crazy in the rain. Even the fan turn now was giving laterals. Like, not like the laterals of the second turn around, but I was like, oh my god. Um, where they put more of the retrack, uh, yeah. you just get consistent floater throughout both of those hills now before the second turn around. Consistent lat, lat floater, I guess I'll call it, because it's not ejector. <laughs> but you're getting, like, if I'm on the left side, I'm, I'm flying into Alex. Like, and then the turnaround is insane. You're pinned to the right. And then the last hills. The last hills. Why am I... Why am I getting thrown out of my seat? Literally, like... Why am I getting thrown laterally out of my seat? Like, I, my restraint is not keeping me in, bro. 
<laughs> Man, shout out Parks taking care of Woody's the right way. Uh, right. And I and I was telling them it does hurt that we probably will never get a large scale gravity goop or GCI, but that will take this because I officially coined this as the hidden gem of Virginia. This is the hidden gem of Virginia Grizzly. In its current state, it is fighting for my top thirty, bro. <laughs> like, let me let me stop you in your tracks. Don't don't forget Verbolton exists. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm like, just I'm just joking. Verbolton, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Verbolton's actually joking. good. If you would have said Dark Coaster, I would have liked. <laughs> 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 but like, when I get a Verbolton, I always have a good time too. I'm not gonna lie, but Grizzly is legit a. It's like a barrel aged wooden coaster now. Like that shit is, it was it was terrible. Like some uh, some old bourbon. R- right. It is that what they did do it was so good. Like the retrack, they need to do that to every fucking wooden coaster on planet Earth. None of this Titan track, none of this weird transitioning. And like if you're gonna do it with Titan track, make the whole coaster Titan track, please. You, you've heard us talk about this. Season one was basically all this shit of us complaining about it, but for real. As I basically have had the pleasure and opportunity to get on Grizzly enough to see that what this what the what the retrack does the gra- uh, the gravity group pre cut track and even with Voyage like seeing it last year and now I'm gonna see it again like I I'm telling y'all they they that is the way that is the way to keep your wooden coasters <laughs> not making these weird hybrids. All that stuff. Like, mm. Like, put the pre-cut track on El Toro. But at the same time, I think it's structural issues with El Toro. At the same time, I heard El Toro's running pretty good. So, uh, I heard it's running the best it's run in years this year. I was hearing similar. Yeah, so. Yeah, that, definitely, that's... Definitely need to go ride El Toro. So, yeah, it was awesome shit posting with them. We actually have very similar coaster takes. Um... <laughs> We were, we, were, we were joking, like, Top Thrill who? Because everyone, obviously, that weekend was riding Top Thrill 2, which we're going to be getting to, clearly. The hot the hot button topic of the week. Even though it's built, we can't <laughs> stop talking about it, right? It's like, that's how big of a ride it was. Which, I really wish I could have had him on the cast, but I, this is one thing I do want to shout out. Uh, obviously, shout outs to Coaster Heat. Uh, homies. And I'm going to be going to Biff's wedding, which he's openly invited to so come out to it. Uh, May 26th. Uh, go out to Dorney Park. Uh, they're definitely gonna be uh, definitely check out Coaster Heat, uh, Biff on uh, Coaster Heat, and all that stuff on the socials for or info on that. But the 26th, they're definitely having stuff there. We're gonna see their celebration, their ceremony, and then ride some rides after. But the reason I bring that up, Coaster Heat, it's because one member, Scooby Coasters, and his YouTube Ghoster Coasters, him, his mom, uh, a few of his friends put together a beautiful two, basically two our documentary covering top thrill dragster from you know everything that happened with dragster from even the rumors like for the stuff we were coming up with the mm. construction like a day-to-day construction videos like literally of like all the speculation we were coming up with and it was honestly very heartwarming just seeing like going back and just looking at a time of speculation and enthusiasts coming together and actually just trying to figure shit out <laughs> Um, yeah, he covers all that, and it ends, and I don't want to spoil it. Basically, like, y'all should go watch it, because it, it not only is a history, but it ends with a cool 30-minute segment of, you know, the first rides and all that stuff, and reviews from people there, and it's a, it's a really uh, cozy, like, I'm telling you, Ghoster Coasters, if you haven't subscribed, some of the best uh, coaster content uh, you can find right now when it comes to the vlogs, uh, when it comes to actually uh, speculation and... Uh, uh, and honestly, like I said, it feels like you're just vibing with uh, people with vlogs. Because for me, I have a hard time looking at vlogs. <laughs> I'm not really a vlog watcher, but if I am, it has to feel like it basically it's almost like a, I'm seeing the park. You know, they're, they're making me feel like, oh, like look at this park. You know, look how cool it is. I'm going to experience it with me. Kind of almost like a, they're kind of making a story go along with it. That's what, that's the vibe I get with Ghost of Coaches all the time. So definitely go check out their stuff. Uh, really, the top, the, um, his documentary, let me make sure um, I get it correct, the name of it. It is Race for the Sky documentary. Top Thrill Dragster to Top Thrill 2. So definitely, definitely give it a look. 
uh, when you can. But yeah, speaking of which, first reactions of Top Thrill 2. Top Thrill 2. Man, so... A lot, a lot of buzzing. A lot of buzzing. It seems like Zamperla... Zamperla was able to hit it. it. Seems like they got Riz. Not only they got Riz to talk to you to point, uh, they uh, actually uh, were able to close the deal. Because <laughs> it seems like it's a hit from everyone. Deal. Uh, every most, it's almost unanimous that I have heard, besides select few, that this is better than Dragster. Which is good to hear, honestly. No, I'm, I'm, I am proud that we were wrong. <laughs> I am proud yeah. we were, like, I am happy because then now we have another manufacturer in the game. Like, like, for real, we got another, we got another big old manufacturer in the game that could probably do some heavy hitters because... From what I was hearing about the first week, at least, of Operation, that ride was, uh, was definitely a, a contender for people's top 25s. Um, now, a lot of the first reactions, you know, people were praising the weightless as the spike, you know, the height of it, the uh, how the backwards launch is insane, you know, how, how long you get in it, and even, like, once you start going on the third launch, it basically feels like you're on the old Draxer again. You're you're back in the set, you're back in the dragster, not an F one car, but no. The interesting thing I got from all of this is the science and engineering behind it. So apparently, this train is kind of tall compared to the dragster train, and because of that, heart lighting is not going to be the same. <laughs> uh, because of that, apparently the laterals have been crazy going up and going down like people have said they've been pinned essentially <laughs> when, a, when like uh to like one side hmm. and i was like ooh, that was the shit i liked about fucking uh sky rush <laughs> so interestingly enough all the praise happened from it all the people talking about it uh, for, honestly, I was expecting the wait time to be worse, but that Saturday, I mean, any opening day, and I, I understand this more and more as I go. Uh, you're gonna have, you're basically gonna have times where people are just, um, they are. This is essentially the first true day. They had the pass holder preview days. That's a lighter day. That first Saturday is the true test. You know, like. <laughs> What was the maximum wait time? I think it was four it hours. It was like four hours? Yeah, so I thought... That's Cause it, cause, but that was all together with everything. So, like, if you had to put something in your lo in a locker, there was a wait for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was a wait uh, for something um, else. But Well, and then I, I think... I believe I saw on opening day they were, they were super backed up parking-wise, too. Yeah, I mean, the fact that people felt like... People were saying Cedar Point was complete again, and... People, you know, they had to have seen South Thrill 2 and everything going on. Because I'm telling you, people think other fanboys are... No, Cedar Point has the most fanboys. You have people that claim they're enthusiasts but only go to Cedar Point their whole lives. Um, <laughs> like, like, and that's fine. Like, it's... It is almost a cultural, like, a Midwest cultural phenomenon for some. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like a tradition. It's like Cedar Point is serious for them. Like that's that's what yeah. I mean, like so, yeah. They they're definitely I feel like came in, in droves for that to support that, and I think the biggest win here is that ride didn't go down only for rain. I think. I thought I heard it went down for like an hour. That was it. Yeah, an hour. I don't know like, if it was for, okay, for rain like, or not. I don't even want to try to do the math because I mean the math would probably make. I, I would imagine that Steel Vengeance went down for at least an hour that day in Maverick 2, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but no, basically, like, an hour for a whole operating day 11 to, let's say 10, I think it was. And That's impressive. compared to six to eight times or minimum going down a day, and potentially not even, like, closing by eight or something, because it's like, oh, screw we just can't, you know, it's just... It screwed us for the whole day, you know, like. Yeah. Now, that ratio, I don't even, like, it is 
you don't even have to do the math to see how like the difference you know like yeah and then, then that's the funny thing is like lightning rod people are saying the same thing you know like it's been way more reliable and now some people are saying it's close to 2016 rides hmm. because the ride is able to just stay going all day two trains on yeah. it tracks always warm that's true Yeah, I so all this good news. I, I I still think they they really should be uh giving you these locks for fucking free. But you know you know I'm not gonna be a dead horse here. We all we all know what they <laughs> should be doing. We all know what they should. And do. then Fun Spot America tweeting, you know, we may not have a 400 foot tall roller coaster, but at least we provide you with loose article vids. So like, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> Funspot be trolling all the time though. It's like I don't know they're they're Twitter admin a, a real one. <laughs> so to keep on top for two here, man, we got a lot of reviews and stuff. A lot, I'm so so happy where stuff's open now. We get to talk about it. I wish we could. I had a more active year this year, but it's still awesome to see the industry popping, man. Um, but so this basically just released a few days ago, and this is a lot of Ricky Ricky Fuji armchair discussion happening. Over this, because um, yeah, there's been a somebody essentially just looking at the cams of Cedar Point every single day, uh, <laughs> and analyzing the launch. I'm, I'm like, okay, guy, like, uh, okay, that, that's that's a bit much, but <laughs> grasping for straws. But apparently, he found it uh, on the sixth, and it was uh, nowhere near what it normally has been running uh, compared. Now. I will say this looks at least five to seven miles per hour slower. People are saying one. I'm like, y'all are high. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that as the high roller here. Y'all, y'all, give me what you're smoking, basically. Uh, it, might make, it might make for an entertaining cast. Like, But I digress. <laughs> uh, essentially, there's been a lot of speculation of the main reason they're doing this is for longevity of the trains. Uh, there's people saying, oh... It's because it's too rough. They're trying to tone it down for that. Uh, there's people saying... There's people saying it's the wind. Uh, I have arguments for everything, by the way. I've, I've seen I've seen so much. I've seen so much. So, What are your thoughts on this, RC? Like... It's, it's frustrating because I want them to run the rides at the advertised speed. But, I mean... If they're doing it for operational reasons, it makes sense. So it's like... It's kind of just inevitable that the park does it to keep the ride running peak. Yeah. I'm like... Just... Like, sometimes run it at a high speed, maybe? (laughs) That'd be cool. So, to bounce off of that, yeah. If they had... What is there? Do they have Coaster Mania there or whatever the fuck it's called? Yeah. Um, for Coaster Mania, for the ERT, run mm-hmm. it at that whatever advertised speed. But, and this is assuming, I gotta put up this disclaimer out of this around all this, that they're actually slowing it down. Because, my honest opinion, that was just like, it was, they did it on, what was the 6th of Monday? Yeah. The park wasn't even open that Monday, right? Well, it's like, the other thing that, like, whenever I looked at that video, it's like, this guy could also just be like super like armchair enthusiast like pulled like the most <laughs> the, cli- the clip like he he pulls one clip that looks the absolute fastest like run that he's ever seen of dragster and then throws next to it like the clip that looks the absolute slowest just to like make it look like something it's not i don't know <laughs> but basically i'm like Holy savior! Like, um, it was on a Monday, and yeah, let me check, make sure that the park was open. Like someone, someone said it was only fifty-eight degrees, the coldest day the park's been open. So now I will say, um, oh, they were open on Monday. What the hell? They're open weekly now? Oh no. 
Someone someone has a very technical analysis. Oh my god. On it being something with the winds, I don't know. <laughs> so that's so that's what I'm saying. So like I've had if it's I, I so my opinion, my my opinion. It, it was a test run that day. Like they just did it whatever whatever cuz like I'm hearing people are so saying it's like really good. Like <laughs> so people are still complaining about it being rough. Like just like I, I it's like the same reviews. So I just think it was one run. Cause like you can do adjustable launches on LSMs. I don't know why people are finding that weird. Uh, like we see it when they test Pantheon all the time. Like we're like, well, I wish we could ride it when it's fucking doing the boost mode when they're testing it in front of us. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's like yeah, where they're tone it down for our rides. Now, if it really is longevity, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, like you said, it, it would sucks that they didn't look into it beforehand and be like, oh crap. Uh, this, you know, we made all this, these big ass wheels and all that stuff, this new train to take it and it still can't take it at the advertised speed. Yeah, that's trash. Um, now, I'm sorry, I, I gotta shut out Wallen here. You, Wallen, I love, I know you love Intamin, but don't be a doofus here about saying that Zamperla is the reason this slowed down. Because almost every single one of their high-speed projects have literally been slowed down. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one high-speed project that hasn't been slowed down of theirs. Like, even Millennium has been slowed. Like, they're left like... <laughs> come on. Come on, Wallet. I love you, but come on, man. <laughs> this is such a great thread to read through. I'm not so, gonna lie. So, the wind. Oh, yeah, I want to hear his thread on the wind. Because I got a theory about that, too. Where, where was that paragraph? No, actually, he said not the winter temperature. Oh, he said it's not the winter temperature? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so, all I'm going to say is the passholder preview day, or the media day, whatever, that was 37 degrees, and people were saying that ride was, like, insane. So, I don't want to hear about temperature. I'll take wind over the temperature, basically. Um, I feel like... When you're launching at a certain speed, temps kind of don't matter at a certain point. <laughs> Wind, I feel like, can, though. Um, 100%. So, if it was wind, whatever, you know, I personally think it was test run. I think the ride's still going to slap. And I think that was just a false alarm, false negative. And now we're all clamoring onto it because it's the biggest, you know, the biggest talking piece right now. Everyone just got off of it this weekend. Now you have people scanning the webcams every single minute of every operating hour, every closing minute. They're going, they're they're going to sleep. Tracking right. every single launch. Like it's crazy. Like their alarm clock is probably watching drags through test run for the morning. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's that's how you have you know you got dedicated fans, man. That's uh, that's crazy. Uh, but. Yeah, that's been, I think that's everything with Top Throw too. Uh, the right, I'm excited to get on it. I'm excited to see where it ranks exactly for me. Uh, I'm not necessarily big on just speed for speed's sake. You know, I generally like having elements for that. But uh, the fact that the top hat uh, actually seems to be an element now and not just <laughs> essentially a, a big v open viewing uh, area for like four seconds. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I I think I'm gonna like the ride much more than Cotton Dragster. So. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly going into it expecting to like it more than uh OG Dragster. Yeah, because everyone's saying it just it's more of a full experience. So the fact that they're saying that and like I mean I yeah. literally only looked forward to the long term car. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Like the top hat doesn't really do much. I mean, apparently it does something la like last year, so it given some good ejector or whatever. But I mean, for most of its life, it gave nothing. Like it gave, you just look for the launch. And that was it. And like the drop was never that good. The lateral was never that good on the drop. So yeah, hopefully, uh, this basically yeah says yeah we got this. And Zimprilla, good job. Now. I will be more impressed when they really do like a full scale some of their own too, but the fact that they were able to retrofit their old top hat, do a whole LSM launch with a spike, it looks great. This time. 
I'm just waiting for that one more thing to really give me on the Zamperla. Like, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys actually are underdogs right now. But great job, Zampy. Great job on top thrill too. Uh, but Marine Land. Uh, apparently they were sold. <laughs> so, uh, and oh, is is there an update on that though? Yeah, there's an update because now, uh, I don't think they're operating any other rides. <laughs> <clears throat> Interesting. Um, let me see. Let me go to the um. Yeah, so since we're starting out of out of country now, out of top thrill two, might as well. Uh, after this connect yeah, Canadian one, we'll go with other stuff out of states. But I'm trying to find the tweet again. Uh, I think from uh, our favorite Taylor Bybee, Coast Studios. Uh, it says um, on their website now, in the 2024 season, certain attractions and facilities will not be available, including land, land animal exhibits, rides, the Hungry Bear Restaurant, the Aquarium, the Penguin Palace, and educational presentations. So, so it looks like, yeah, none of the rides are going to be open. And it doesn't open until June 28th. June 28th. June 28th. Hmm. I don't know, man. I think they're screwed over here. I don't think Marineland's going to be a... Who, who even bought them, bro? Like, let me Let me check this. I want to ride Dragon Mountain, man. <laughs> I care less, but... <laughs> Marineland, uh, so this is by the Toronto News. Marineland is transitioning to new ownership ahead of its 2024 season, the park has confirmed. Marineland prepares for a strategic evolution and redevelopment plan that will occur under new ownership. The park will be focusing on core attractions and experiences this season and offering guests a substantial discount on admission. To recognize decades of community support for Marine Land. They're doing that because none of the rides are open. But this was, uh, uh when, when was this article? $15 to get it now. <laughs> That's what I'm, is it really 15 Yeah, it's 15 for, like, people 13 and older. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, cheapest theme park in the world now, probably. They have two attractions, hey, but they're Dragon not Mountain even rides. Open? No, no, none of the rides are open. Yeah, um, I still think, uh, fuck this place, but, uh, let me give the update after, because there was another thing here. So, an update, ticket prices will be lower this year. Yeah, none of the rides will be open. So, what is open at Marine Land right now? It's, like, two animal exhibits or something. So, you're paying, sure. fifth, you're paying seven bucks for an exhibit, seven fifty for an exhibit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to theme park stories here because the tweet underneath is really how I feel. It's, like, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Like, <laughs> oh, that's shit. a that's a legendary dodgeball quote right there. Man, Marineland, I they. Someone needs to just pull the plug, dude. Like, why? Who is, like, who is, who bought them? Well, I, I didn't get that information. Who who bought this fucking dump, bro? Just to not open the coaster. Bro, like, just last, two months ago, they were found guilty under provinces of animal cruelty over its care of three young black bears. Fuck this place, dude. Shut it down. Oh my god. <laughs> shut, it, shut it down. Well, let's go to a more cool... Let's go to something more troll here, as... Uh, the Wave opens back... At, well, I guess it's technically new, but... What used to be Shockwave at Drayton Manor? Now is The Wave. Uh, now the ugliest trains of all time. Ever. <laughs> but, people are saying the ride's good. 
smooth as it's been ever. And apparently, the Jeep, or people apparently get offended by GP. Uh, the regular guest loves it. I'm going to call them the Jeeps. What about that? <laughs> Is that too derogatory? <laughs> Apparently the Jeeps love it though, because apparently like it has a line now. It didn't have a line before, so Yeah, I'm gonna stop I think that's too close to something else, so I yeah, I'm definitely gonna stop that. <laughs> but uh yeah. Generally though speaking, uh the ride apparently is running good now. Um I'm gonna look at an updated point of view because from what I remember, um Shockwave looks ass i'm not gonna lie um the layout looks very uninspired and i was kind of shocked that it was even an intimate coaster i'm not gonna lie but it definitely was one of their first ones uh the wave right mm. let me just yeah i'm smart let me just meet the povs before all right so we're on the wave here oh let me share my screen for you now have you, have you ever seen this the shockwave pov no, I've not seen the Shockwave POV. Oh, yeah, well, now these are with sit down trains. So this layout was stand up at first, but now these are. Sit -down. Those those trains looked a little. Uh, no, they're disgusting as well. Yeah, they look like a prototype, uh, but they're made by Art Engineering, I think. I think which the same ones are made are Cannibal. So I'm like. Ugh. I just don't know why there's a bar. On the front. Brave the wave. <laughs> <laughs> I think the ride's done here. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, that's why I'm saying I'm like... Yeah, that's... Uh, that's pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. The more you look at the UK, it's like... Their lineup... <laughs> Like, oh shit, the drop off is hard, bro. Um, yeah, yeah. They needed Hyperia, is all I'm gonna say. They 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 needed a uh, and it. What's the what's the what's the Wolves player right now that's going off? <laughs> who's the who's the Wolves? He, he's the who's the young guy? In the oh, oh the and, and the, Anthony. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, they needed they they needed the Anthony Edwards, bro. In in, in the UK, they needed high period of the cup because, bro, holy shit! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Like, why are we even talking? Why why were people even talking about this? Now that I rewatched that, like, it is a banked drop into a loop. A zero G roll and two corkscrews. That is literally a shorter Firebird. <laughs> it's trash. No, it's probably smoother than Firebird. I'll give it that. And it has lap bars. Yeah, yeah so. it's definitely definitely smoother than Firebird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have to talk about that yet. But oh, I cannot wait to talk about that. Before I get to that, though, let's see if there's. Anything more overseas before I just cream about um, uh, this coaster at Europa Park that y'all probably already know um, what I'm going to talk about. Mac product. Uh, <laughs> I think that's I think that's that's everything though. You know? I think a uh, lot of Orlando stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of Florida. Uh, I, I guess we'll go back to Cedar Point real quick because apparently they. Uh, already signed their new contract for uh, uh oh the next I, I remember watching that clip and the thing is it really sounds like tony clark's insinuating that it's another coaster though i don't know if you got that vibe as well but so let me let me go ahead and look at it so let me go to, let me go to marcus the shock uh, it's always great when a news reporter is actually an enthusiast and marcus <laughs> is definitely one of them so we're listening to this on the cast here all right you're listening to my you're looking at my screen right Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the next. Oops, playing from my speakers and not my headphones. All right. What the, why are you still doing it this way? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on I gotta refresh the whole thing now. 
Alright, so technology is the best thing ever. Planned. Okay, great. I believe. Uh, Alright. Uh, the next thing is already planned. Okay, great. I believe, uh, as usual, I give you an exclusive. Yeah. Can I say this? I'm, I'm going through my PR uh, training book real quick. Yeah. Then I was like, you can um, clearly see that. I'll just say that the con a contract has been signed. Oh, really? Okay, for whatever. For the next whatever. For the next whatever. Um, That's actually late breaking news, because yeah. that was recent. That was about a week ago. Okay, so things are still in motion. Yeah, despite I mean, it's, all of the corporate stuff we've, going on. You know, it's, it's funny you say that, because uh, we like to use the phrase, it's business as usual. So we know as much as you do. So when you find out the news about what's going on, we're probably going to yeah. find out at the same time. Uh, and they have to do that, obviously, for, um, you know, uh, legal purposes so they don't they don't tell us so they that's fine i would rather not know i want i need to open a big ride i don't yes. need to focus on that so when we open this we'll be good to go but we still have to do business as usual we have to buy supplies we have to buy new rides that we're already kind of on the radar and things like that so we're just moving about our business and and if and if that stuff happens we'll see we'll see what shakes out and how this all looks in the future but you know, Cedar Point's always gonna be Cedar Point, roller coaster capital of the world. Roller coasters are our legacy, it's in our DNA. We're still gonna build them and they will always be a part of our history. So we're still we're still gonna have some exciting things coming. Okay, the very See, end made that's what that. I'm saying. Yeah, the very end was very clear that the contract was coaster oriented. Uh the next Yeah. That I yeah. Cause I didn't look at the whole clip. In fact a lot of these I haven't looked at uh officially yet, because I think it's cool to actually listen to them together. It's almost like it's almost yeah. like us together and the listener. We're all listening, just, just relaxing after work, whatever. Or maybe you're maybe you're chilling. You're eating, you're doing your dashing, your door dashing. You're doing your delivery driving, or you're on your way to work. And we're all just taking in coasters, just a little bit chill away <laughs> from the craziness of the world. But no, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's definitely coaster oriented, like. Uh, the fact that he ended it really with that, that, oh, we're going to, oh, we're still going to stay the roller coaster capital of the world. Why would you mention the contract then, bro? Why, why would you mention the contract? Because Vokoma's going to be in the park now, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, uh, this would be speculation. There is no clue what they could be adding. Uh, yeah. Basically, we already know it's probably not, it's definitely not intimate. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Anthony was quick to say fuck you and took Dragster off. Uh, they were quick to say fuck you in general. I think they were just almost gonna sue Cedar Fair at some point. Like, yeah, they, there's not good blood between both sides here. And respect, I could see both sides. Yeah, I, I could definitely see both sides here. Um, mostly a, a little more intimate side, but <laughs> at the same time, they. <sighs> See the thing is, if they didn't, if they did not use fake offhand parts like they did with Volcano too, it would definitely be. If they were confirmed intimate parts, which they weren't, then a hundred percent, I mean, it would be like, no, nah, it's definitely intimate. But the fact that they went out of the way and did that, no, nah, I can't, I can't blame that. Cause they, sure, it's expensive, but you're telling them to make prototype rides, and if they're yeah. making, if they're going out of their way to work on prototypes to make it more safe and you're going out of your way to say screw you and get off hand parts nah nah cost cutting bro it's ridiculous and no and 100 percent, i think that's the reason why some of these rides are running better now some of these intimates in these parks i'm telling you 305 has not been running this good in years and maybe it's because they have actual intimate wheels on the track now bro like Oh shit! No more, no more Timu wheels, <laughs> bro, bro. I was literally just saying like, uh, so Temu or whatever Timu, whatever you say, it, it's good for clothing, I guess. If you need to get some clothing, it's fine for that. Anything else, bro? Ass. You're basically buying trash in the mail. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, it, it's basically they probably found out a junkyard, and they're giving it to you in the mail. Um. <laughs> so. Yeah. Unless you're the Grinch and you like uh, hoarding trash, then... Yeah, I would advise not going to Timmy unless it's for clothes, specifically. Uh, but yeah, what's, what's, what's happening here? Um, or overseas stuff. Anything else overseas? Hyperia? I guess Hyperia. So it's mostly Hyperia and Voltron. Which, to be honest... Oh, idea. 
That's so, fine. Oh yeah, and, and Kidia. So I guess we'll, we'll start with Kidia because it goes out of the UK. And uh, but I am I am happy to talk about Six Flags America for a bit later. I, I, I will say that that's a shocking thing to say, but <laughs> but I, I will say Ramar is kind of cooking with what he has. You know he he's doing what uh <laughs> he's doing what them budget cooking, but he he knows how to cook it, man. He's doing he's, ta- he's really he's really like you know hitting it in stride. Like he's pushing to do good stuff at that park. Now, hundred percent, Kidia, Six Flags Kidia. So. They're, but they have been drip feeding details months after months now, uh, and besides us just scoping and hoping for leaks of somebody, uh, <laughs> some of the construction workers posting their uh, updates and everything, uh, there hasn't been much actually from Kidia or Six Flags. But apparently they have an actual website up you can go look up now. Now I wasn't able to find this specific site that Walden was able to have, but. Well, thank you for all your updates. You're basically one of the main news people I get. I, I uh, <laughs> you, you got that blue check mark and you showed with it. So, and I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it because I, I basically you do hit a lot of the news that uh, we will we'll be talking about the cast. So I will shout that out because uh, a lot of a lot of the community makes this cast. To be honest, like we we literally would not be getting any of this news without the community, like. <laughs> It, I'm at, like we're not out. scoping this shit out. Like you think we're going out ourselves, like <laughs> getting all this information, bro? Like nah. Like so, yeah. Shout out to Wallen, even though your takes, Whew. <laughs> Whew. But uh, basically, uh, first thing they're going over here is Kidia. Uh, Ste- uh, is getting Steam Town the first land. Uh, it's gonna be what apparently is described as the past and future collide—a rustic land full of excitement and thrill, a land of gears, contraptions, and whimsical thrills for the whole family, and featuring Iron Rattler, the tallest tilt coaster in the world. So, keep in mind, you're gonna hear a lot of basically something in the world here, because this park is breaking every record in some way. Um, yeah, they're gonna have a Vacoma, a hyper Vacoma tilt coaster. Oh, uh, here. Uh, no, I Jeez. can't wait. Yeah. Oh my god. This this looks like a Planet Coaster creation. Uh, I, I I've been saying this again, but when you look at more than just Falcon's Fly here, this park looks crazy. Uh, but also, if you do not have a hat, like in like not just like a, a baseball cap, like a true sun hat, you are going to bake. Cause I saw no shade in this park <laughs> in any of the renderings, bro. There is no shade anywhere. And I get it. There's no trees or anything, but come on, bro. Like, I mean, imagine how crazy the rides are going to run. So I'm saying, none of the rides are going to be open. The, the hydraulic fluids are going to be boiling. Like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. I mean, I'm just going off of 305. That happens to 305 already. And it gets 95 degrees here at the hottest, 100. I think, how hot, what's the average... How hot does it get in Riyadh, where Kitty is? Oh, 96 degrees. Average temperature. Okay. Hot. Okay. So never mind. <laughs> no, I mean, that's fucking hot. But that's, that's fucking hot. But like I, I was saying, like, Virginia, I would say average is like in summer 85, 90. And three or five will be going down like once or twice a day because of that. Uh, I will say I think I'm the good luck charm for 305, because uh, when I went on Sunday that thing went it was flawless. The thing was running not once not only was it on fire, uh, it did not go down once. And the day before when I was talking to some of the ops, I was like, <laughs> I was like it's running good this year, hasn't it? And they was like, you were here yesterday, but now like three times. <laughs> I'm a good luck charm for 305. Trust. Uh, but yeah, Riyadh doesn't get that hot. To what I thought, I thought it was like a, like absurd. Like, a hundred degrees plus, basically, like. <laughs> like 105 average. Yeah, like, I thought it was, like, something like that. But apparently 96, like, that's still fucking hot. But, yeah, it's not. I've experienced worse than Texas. I, feel like. <laughs> I might feel a lot like Texas, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, they, um, they're going to be having Iron Rattler. One thing I'm upset that they're adding, though, is, uh. A Zamperla Nebula. I'm sorry, I I I I, I got to rant about this, bro. Have you been on one of those, bro? No, I don't think so. Just don't, cause 
in my opinion, it is the worst modern flat ride to have come out. Like, what were they thinking with that cycle time? I just don't understand. I don't know if they can run faster in parks or make them run like ass, but 30 second to 7 minute load to ride ratio is just... Nah, bro. Like, <laughs> nah. I'm uh, that's nah. I'm gonna. Oh, that's that's what they've got at uh, Hershey. Right? Yep, they have a Hershey. Yeah, and I've, I've, a... I've just dodged it every time I've ever ridden it. I I think I've done two, and I said like I told everyone that was too too many. Cause I did the one I did the one there, the mix, and then I did the new one, at Aeronautical's Landing or whatever at a uh, Carowinds. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just, they need to put them in more scenic, like, if I'm going to be stuck up there for that long, at least put me in good view. They never put them in good views. Like, I'm looking at nothing, bro. Like, I'm just sitting up there looking like a dumbass. Like, I'm sitting there, I feel like I'm just, like, they're pointing at me like I have a dunce cap on. Just sitting in the middle of the park. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, like saw, <laughs> Sawmill Falls is apparently I don't know if this is a record breaker too. Embark on the thrilling whitewater adventure aboard one of Doctor Screamore's prototype vaporizing vehicles. Which Doctor Screamore Hold up, isn't that this is kind of a teaser for later, but isn't that also a uh, wasn't that basically a new character for Six Flags America? No, that's it's Professor Screamore's Skywinder is the okay. uh, re-theme, retheme name. Not Professor Screamore, sorry. So they yeah. trademarked Screamore, clearly. But no, it's going to be a big water ride. It's going to be seven stories tall, so, so it's actually not going to be that big. But uh, Then they're going to have a Nebulas, so ass. And so what else is here? Uh, next up, City of Thrills. Enter the heart-pounding metropolis known as City of Thrills, where adrenaline seekers uh, unite in search of record-breaking high-octane experiences. I just love that name for an actual park. That should just be a City of Thrills. Um, featuring Falcon's Flight, Tallest, Longest, Fastest, and Sirocco Tower, Tallest Drop Tower in the World, and more. Which I don't know what more is, but well, let's see. Falcon's Flight is going to be here, uh, Sirocco Tower... Is that going to be an SNS or an Intimate? I think it's going to be an Intimate, actually. It, lo it looks like it's the um, gondola of the Intimate drop towers. And it looks like it has over the shoulder restraints, I think. Yeah, they do. So That's 475 that. feet. For, uh, 145 meters is 475 feet. How tall was the Icon drop tower? Not that tall. <laughs> There's no way. No, that was. It was 400. I think. Or no. Let me see. 430 feet tall. Yeah, 430. Dude, that's gonna... crazy. Wow. 475. What the fuck? Holy shit. <laughs> Taller than the that's Great Pyramid crazy. of Giza. That's um, insane. So apparently Adrenaline is going to be a B&M invert that's going to be uh, in the in that area. Hopefully, hold up. As high as a six-story building. 120 meters. Meters to... Wait. Something about that doesn't sound right. A 400-foot B&M invert. Yeah, what? As high as a six-story building. Uh... What? Let's see here. Maybe maybe that's referring to its like location off a cliff or something. I don't know. Yeah, it has to because like. But the drop tower though, that is that actually going to be four hundred seventy-five? Like, there's are they really about to build a giga invert right now? Like, I don't think so. But maybe. <laughs> but let's look. Let's let's look at the rendering here. So. Where do you even queue? I'm assuming Falcon's Fight's over here. This is here. Is that Adrenaline? Bro, I don't know. I'm not sure. 
regardless, uh, they say I'm going to go up with a six-story building. So, 60 feet, and that is kind of a small B&M invert, not going to lie. Uh, Grand Ex... Grand Ex... Uh, I, Jesus, that threw me off. Grand Exposition. A land where history and innovation collide. Here, the spirit of iconic world's fairs from the past comes to life. Featuring Colossus, the hybrid wooden coaster. Uh, it's not a wooden coaster. It, it's a hybrid. It, it's not even a hybrid wooden coaster. It's just... Yeah, that's just a steel coaster, bro. Because that's Titan Truck on wood. So that's what RMCs are, right? That's a steel hybrid in my eyes. <coughs> Sorry. The tru I, I truly see that as steel hybrid. No, like... That's not a wooden coaster. Uh, but Colossus is going to be its name. Uh, it, what what trains are on those? I don't know why those looks like a... The, they look like Timberliners at first. Uh, gyro spin. Sword of Red Height spinning G forces on the giant pendulum swing. Largest pendulum. Largest pendulum. Discovery Springs. In Discovery Springs, you will find both aquatic adventure and tranquil place to relax. Featuring Sea Stallion. The tallest and fastest ride controlled <laughs> coaster in the world. And I Rider don't care because it's a Mauer. <laughs> it's only the Mauer, the Mauer ride we shit on, but they're adding one in the park. It's called Sea Stallion. Interesting. An exciting Zuma Fluma. <laughs> it's going to be their big flume ride. An exciting uphill river adventure along a log flume. Three-story waterfall drop. Um, and Valley of Fortune. Legends of unimaginable treasures have led to the explorers from every corner of the world to this land. Featuring Spitfire, Intamin Swing Launch with a record-breaking 240-foot inversion. Skywatch, Flying Tent. <laughs> we need more Flying Tents because, uh... I think we should have a Flying Tent along with an actual Observation Tower, but that's just me, but... Yeah, um... That's really cool looking. A high speed uh, triple launch. Yeah, it's going to have an inverted top hat that's 240 feet tall. Uh, 127 kilometers an hour. Uh, kilometers. It's like 80 or something, I want to say. 70. Let me do the quick maths. Um, Seventy-eight. Okay. Or more like 79 miles an hour rounded up, so... 79 miles an hour is not bad. It's 80 miles an hour launch. Yeah, that's... I mean, you gotta kind of send it if you're going 240. And I'm assuming they're gonna give us hang time there. They're not gonna try to give us positives there. So... Uh, and last but not least, from Walden Ball, he says, Twilight Gardens. The magic of nightfall and a sky of twinkling lights come to life in Twilight Gardens. The family-friendly kids section of the park filled with a dark ride... Kitty coasters and a neat entertainment for families. Yeah, uh, I think there was some else said about the dark rides and stuff. Uh, he might have talked about. It's the kitty coaster there. It's gonna be the family, uh, more chill area of the park for sure. Twilight Gardens. Uh, so I think he said a little bit more if I remember correctly. Um, I'm just trying to be sure. Ooh, uh, there's a three oh. Kidia. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. This is an actual 3D model, bro. I'm just it's looking at Falcon's flight. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, hold up. That's insane. So. <clears throat> Falcon, where does it start, bro? So I'm guessing you have to walk under that oh, top hat fuck. all the way to the back and then to the right to get to that station. All right, so that swing launch looks kind of... They're doing a top throw uh, Red Force Ka. Like a, 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 they're doing that for Spitfire. Because look at it. That's clearly like a top hat. There's only one top at mm -hmm. the park. And there's no other layout around that. It's just that one little loop. And the, 
It looks like you walk under that top hat and go back to the right. That's how you get all the way to Falcon's Fight Station, I think. What is, yeah, so Falcon's Fight Station, you start off with a launch lift. Oh. You go up. Okay. Right over here. You go up and then come go back around, around that BS. Come back around, go down. Let's see. Jeez, you have to be going like a hundred. That's such a such an insane miles. project. You have to be going at least one hundred fifteen miles an hour after that big camel butt. because if you look at it, if you're going like eighty, yeah, this would not be that interesting. But you're going probably so fast that yeah, yeah. So the tow coaster looks interesting. Colossus will be right next to it too. Uh, I wonder what's going to be inside the big tent exactly. Uh, cool shit. Uh, there was something else, maybe. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what it was. Enough about shatter record-breaking coasters. They're also opening world-class dark rides. In this unique interactive dark ride, the Triotech guests journey on thrilling underwater uh, expedition to help restore the beauty and wonder to life below. So, apparently they're adding... This is going to be... Yeah... When you got money, you can make the most ridiculous, uh, yeah, you can make big, you can make big things happen. So. Kidia, 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 you've always been talking about it, but you definitely had to talk about it here again. And now what's the, it's basically Hyperia and Voltron. So Vol Hyperia, I think all that's been happening with that is, um. I'm trying to see if I remember. Why can't I find the Hyperia thing? Jesus Christ. Can't find it at all now. But uh, essentially, it's been testing. Um, it's going through all of its stuff. The queue is getting done. Um, so, I think the opening day is... 24th? I could be wrong, though. Um... This is an interesting, like, theme tweet that Thorpe sent out for that. In the whispering shot. So I didn't look at this yet. I literally just posted. Like I said, like I don't even look at any of it now. I'll just read it, but I won't look at anything video-wise until the cast. So it uh, was kind of just like an animated video. In the whispering shadows of an island, imprisoned by the fear of the ocean's relentless embrace, my name echoes Hyperia. But as I gaze upon those birds who fly so freely, a blazing beacon of inspiration ignites within me. If they can conquer the vast skies, so can I. So I toil day and night, forging wings of unbreakable gold steel, each stroke of the hammer fueled by the desire to conquer my fear. The Mid theme, Loki. Mid theme. <laughs> <laughs> Empowered by courage, I prepare to take flight. And in that moment, I found my fearless. Yeah, not only that, there's in apparently the they're complaining about it's been a big thing the product. past week. <laughs> <laughs> they're complaining about the UK. Community is uh, say we need more theming with this ride. Like there's nothing for it theme wise, and that came out. And Pantheon I'm like, yeah, level? yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of Pantheon level of like, yeah, <laughs> this is the surface level. But you're building that big of a ride. You got three elements. Sure, you can maybe make near misses, but I don't know how much theming you really could do it. Maybe in the queue, probably yeah, for sure. Uh, but we don't know yet. We gotta we gotta wait and see because they're still definitely doing the queue right now, but. <laughs> Mock product. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, Hyperia's Steam came out. I think that was the only thing with Hyperia because it's been doing so much testing, going through so much of all this to do. Extremely big for the UK, like I said earlier, because uh, this is the biggest coach coming out uh, there now. Uh, literally in height, not not length, unfortunately, but. Uh, it's going to be doing some crazy cutting edge inversions we haven't seen before. 
So, I'm excited to see what the hype is uh, and all that stuff. But, on to the more exciting coaster that opened up. Voltron. Voltron. Did you look at anything about that? No, honestly. So, a lot of people are saying it is a slam dunk that are getting on it. They're saying, <laughs> uh, from the bluesiest chat, Gooch. Shout out to Gooch, by the way. But he said, uh, that is uh, easily top 10 worthy. He needs to find out where to put it, though. And I was like, God damn. Um, some people were saying, easily best coast in Europe. And I'm like, damn. Because uh, Europe has some heavy hitters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they meant Europa Park. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> there were people that were really loving this ride, bro. Like, um... <clears throat> There was even a point where uh, there's a video where uh, I was looking like at Lef that. LaFills and Thrills was really having a conversation with him. And the time I found out where essentially they've been trying out new, tra new wheels on every single train. Like they have different set of wheels on every train, excuse me. Um, and that's why people's ride experience may be varying. But they're trying, trying to figure to out what works the best. The best. And yeah. I'm like, more parks need to do that. Speaking of which, I think um, there is a park that is doing that. Uh, I don't know if it was Top Thrill 2, but another ride that opened, they were testing. I think it was Nemesis that I heard about that uh, on the Twitterverse. But the, that that the um, Nemesis one is just hearsay, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, Voltron has been getting great reviews. The area around it looks incredible. That Croatia steampunk... Uh, I know you're probably not going to look at the queue or anything, but wow. Um, <laughs> that's all I have to say. It is just say, uh... Speed Hill looks crazy. Yeah. Not going to lie. No, so, wait. I, actually, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at this one. So, shout outs to... Because there is a POV I do want to look at for Voltron. Because I put it so much Voltron, but it kind of does bleed into the same. It's kind of just covering it, talking about how great it is. And short from content, um... But... I'm going to say that this one we should look at by Coaster Picks, uh, Coaster underscore Picks on X. Uh, they be posting um, pictures of coasters on the, from Europe and all that stuff. So, Jesus it's Christ. Christ. POV from uh, El Toro Ranch, that looks far. Because this one is going to be using a force. You see that? Yeah, I looked at that one too. The G tracker. Tracking the negative G's. Yeah, 17 minute video. Jeez. Ejection drifter. Double up. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> but yeah. All right, let me check out to our Ryan's page. Uh. Oh, is that the official POV? Yeah. I don't know, man. That ride looks fucking incredible in my eyes. Like, And I don't think they're done with like the turntable area either. So that's going to be more closed in once they're officially done with it all. Um, so I am looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to easily be one of the heaviest hitters in Europe, if not the one of Europe now. It wouldn't shock me. Um... Especially once they get the wheel situation figured out. Get uh finish up every single point of theming. I think it looks amazing. Uh, but I think that's all overseas. Because otherwise, uh, let's get over some good gravy. So, we have but some... Everything it sounds like just sounds like it's a really good addition to Holiday World. Now, so I will far. say, this looks... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it's on it's on the YouTube, so So right now we're looking at throw rides uh on YouTube. Throw rides with a Z and 
they yeah I've been honestly looking at them for a while so it's cool to see that they got an immediate day for this I'm not gonna lie though it looks slow even with full people ah <laughs> oh, jeez but we'll have to see I, I haven't seen this so I, I'm curious but I'm excited to get on good gravy just get a plus one on it I'm excited to hit that for ert er for your Hollywood Nights Plus one. Plus one. Hmm. Like, this makes Big Bear Mountain look like Drax, or Top Thrill 2. Bruh. <laughs> Man, that capacity is going to be trashed as well. But, everything around it looks fucking fantastic. Uh, I will. I do think the ride experience is definitely not going to be the big high point of the ride. Uh, but they park needed something like this so bad. They really did. Like it's supposed to be a family park, and what families realistically they have <laughs> like that's all they had. They had Howler and Raven. <laughs> that's like the branch between the two. Even, Raven is like, <laughs> bro. I'd be terrified insane. of that if I yeah. were their kid. Like. They definitely needed that. That's a good addition. So, let's cover this here. Like, they, 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 all the theming pieces they have here is great, bro. Like, oh yeah, they they really went hard on that. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the queue looks good. All the big, <laughs> like grandma kitchen, like type of utensils and cutlery objects is fantastic. Um. I think there's one more here showing well that's the same one post the same one twice i think my bad but regardless yeah uh good times good vibes uh it seems like it's gonna be that way and at least you have a new picture to take with uh with um voyage now it fits more the thanksgiving area and you're not having a big hole just between um uh, thunderbird anymore Mm-hmm. The legendary hill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick. I guess we'll go with that with them. Um, we'll talk about what's all the Florida news. What is all of the Florida news? It's a lot of Florida stuff. But I know there's a few stuff before that, so that's. Not... Well, I guess Fast and the Furious about... is planning is being planned to open in 2026. Like, there is so much Florida. Um, Jesus Christ. You can knock it's out a lot of the of other, other smaller stuff. Yeah, that's the same. Before we uh, talk about Florida. Fast and the Furious uh, at Universe Studios Hollywood is uh, unfortunately 2026. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm still looking at this Holiday World stuff. It looks like I'm about to get my ass beat with this roller, and I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I'm back in Tom and Jerry. This shit's hilarious. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, it doesn't surprise me. I thought 2025 was too fast for the amount of construction we saw. Like, I don't even think we see track or anything yet. Like, we see yeah. maybe beginnings yeah. of the station and stuff, but, like, they're still putting footers down. They're building on a, a mountain side, like, a cliff side. Not easy. You know, it, it's it's rough, you know. So, I, it, it's probably it's a wonder they're even making a coaster there, to be honest. Um... But it's awesome to see, and I'm quite waiting for the progress. That's going to be something to look forward to. Uh, first thing for 2026, for sure, confirmed at least, unless there's a uh, other stuff I'm missing. I think does the Wallaby Ron Alps uh, is that dueling RMC coming out in 2025 or 2026? I think it's 2025. But yeah, for 2026 at least, you can look out for Universe Studios Hollywood Drift, which it was coined that name. Um, Phoenix Rising Pass member preview start in June. Oh, fuck, that's Florida, but... <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> uh, SeaWorld San Diego with a, a very United Parks new entrance. <laughs> yeah, uh, Carowind's actually updated Thunder Striker. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Ser I gotta, sorry, SeaWorld San Diego? Come on, bro. That is the most bland, <laughs> like, you just put fucking cardboard... You just put pallets. Oh, <laughs> Uh, over your entrance booths and call it a day. Like, I mean, it looks good. 
like non shit post, it looks good, but it does not beat what it was there before. So why why, why downgrade? I guess. Uh, I don't know. I do not know. But uh, Carolyn's Williamsburg got some updates too. Oh yeah, I guess I'll go over this Stick, quick. Cause sticking sticking with the. No. Have you seen that? Like, you look at it. Looks, it looks quite yeah. good, actually. Um, I wish I they mean... had it for opening day, but yet, just like I said, they might add on more to that. Um, I, I forgot the name of the day. Thunder Alley. That's what they're calling it. Oh God! I wish I did. Oh no, no. I'd say it's just kind of generic. Yeah, it is generic. It's like it's fine. I remember. I, I once was gonna say I thought it was same as Steel Alley, but it's Steel Yard at um, Dirty Park. <laughs> So I'm glad that that's the case. Um, what's happening in here? Oh yeah, so new theming, uh, new Iron Man exchanges, uh, netting on the element, and some new theming. So I actually uh, met uh, IB real quick for a bit. Very chill fellow. Uh, but oh, they added a new cart. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> oh, I, I think that I think I know where that is. Okay, I just think I don't think we went there in the queue. But you can see definitely Iron Menace is a hit. Because uh, look at that queue all the way back in those cattle pins. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, Buzzing. No, I, I, I generally think it was a really good fit um, for the park. Now, I would love to see them try to do something different with the dives in a way. But we need Vacoma to come in and tell them, ha, ah, you didn't sauce it up, so now we did. Now we're suing you too, so uh, fuck you. Um <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to win that, by the way. I think I don't know why Vacoma's actually suing them, to be honest. Uh, but I think Iron Man has got more updates. Or excuse me, not more Iron Man's got updates. Uh, Carowind, Cedar Point, Kings Island all got three park surveys sent out. So this, this is was, another big this thing. This is just upsetting. Yeah, this is uh, pretty <laughs> upsetting. Yeah, was, uh, just the models that they proposed are just... So... I need to go to Coaster Hub to look at all this again. Uh, Kings Island, Hub. Cedar Point, and Carowinds all sent out uh, emails, survey emails to. Shoot, where's the tweet? Oh, this is it. I see it now. Okay. I need to sign in. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I want me to sign in everywhere. They sent out. Surveys asking guests their opinions of multiple new ride concepts. Notably, a 300-foot B&M dive. Um, a super log flume manufactured by Whitewater West, which I have not heard of before. And then I don't, I don't see the concepts that um, they did Family Throw Coaster as well. But I remember Kings Island and Cedar Point, they had different ones. There was like a, a tilt coaster or something for the Bruh, Cedar Point. Survey. I'm getting I'm getting known for getting for throwing myself on rides on Instagram now. <laughs> Did you see the the reel that my homie posted? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's really fun to do on Switchback. <laughs> oh my god. No, I just can't believe how it was running, bro. Like <laughs> Like even look on the back, it was like I just landed at the end of there. Like what the fuck was that ride on that day? I'm sorry, I will always talk up Switchback. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, now that I'm here, let me go to the actual, uh, talking piece in mind. Uh, so the first one, Kings Island Ruth survey, uh, the most notable would be near a 200 foot tall mock extreme spinning coaster. Um, first inverted launch. Uh, second one would be, so yeah, I, the wing, shit. After that, let's relaunch. The other thrill concept is a 300-foot B&M dive. This is disgusting. Genuinely. Come on now. Oops. 
A giga dive, bro. And the family concepts depict a full circuit shuttle family coaster in the back of the car training. As well as end our family coaster akin to Revenge of the Mummy Parks. I'm like, I'll take that one. But the thing is, if this is for King's Island, why the fuck would they add that when they have Adventure Express? Then they just revamp Adventure Express to be like an adventure kind of like mind train, like train ride or some shit. I, I don't remember it being that extensive. <laughs> no, I thought they just rethemed it though. Like, I thought it was just year. like a, a, a like pretty decent refresh, okay. more more than anything else. I don't, I could. Be wrong, <laughs> I don't know. People are saying it's like great now, so I I don't know. Um, but in my opinion, it's clear. Wait, hold up. Is that looking at it? okay? It's clear it's gonna be. They just need to add the mock extreme spinner. Yeah, it's gonna be games. that. Like out of all of these, if they're adding this, I and I, then I Cedar Point needs to add the tilt. <laughs> Now, I do think these might get swapped up a bit. Like, I think some of the some parks that they're saying that they're advertising this for might actually not get it, and the other park might get something. But when that will happen, you said it earlier, right? The Carowinds is getting the fucking water ride, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. I said that was one of the proposed ones. No, they, they the 100%. Today. They 100% are getting the water ride. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be shocked. Well, but, but first off, there's two water rides being advertised. So, uh, Clown Boar, the world's most... The Super Flume, yeah, the... Jeez, that is a kind of fucking massive. But I was not a big fan of, like... Flumes being big, just for Flumes being big. But this kind of looks like that has more going for it on the bottom, it seems like. Um, so... If that's the case, then yeah. I'll, you know, I just don't think Carowinds would make that anything too great now the water coaster makes more sense for carowinds in my opinion dive coaster with a for dive what's the nearest dive coaster to carowinds is it uh bgt i guess nah bgw maybe no yeah it would be bgw sorry but so i don't yeah. think it's the dive in my opinion i mean that's not completely out of the question, I guess. I just think you're sandwiching yourself with dives that you're like, hmm. Oh no. Those are like a like a, a long ways away compared to like King's Dominion and Bush being like an hour apart. Let's say. Yeah. And it'd be a hundred feet taller than Griffin. So. Man, I'm just like I like dives. I just wish they could just make one with a full layout. I don't know why that's hard to do. But the family coaster throw model that's being thrown out, uh, I'm a, I have a feeling that's going to Cedar Point now. I'm not going to lie. I don't even think they advertise that for Cedar Point. But that's my consensus. Um, um, I'm, now, I'm hoping not. <laughs> I think these surveys are bullshit because if he said, because what, what, what did we just get? This was a week ago. We got Tony Clark a few days ago with that report where he's all like, yo, yeah, we have the contract signed for our next ride. What are our surveys going to influence with the contract being signed? <laughs> I mean, that would, I guess, that would kind of imply that the surveys are for future projects, not what's already in pro process of mm -hmm. being done. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think Kings Island's getting the, the mock spinner. I think uh, Cedar Point is getting the uh, family coaster. And I think that uh, they're, uh, Carowind's getting the, the flume. Because like, they're sharing the same concepts at all these parks, you know what I'm saying? But that's how I'm seeing it. So it's like... Yeah... There's like gauge and guest response. I'm trying to see what people are thinking for. Wow. Apparently, Amusement Insider's tow coaster was used in the uh, <laughs> in that survey. Shout out, to, shout out to Austin there. Yeah, it was good enough to be used by an actual fucking <laughs> parks. <laughs> that's sick. But no, that's interesting. Um, I I. I don't know how true these surveys are. They did this last year with, or earlier this year with uh, Canada's Wonderland, right? Who knows? I, I think this is like teasers in my eyes, personally. Because they're clearly working on something now inside the mountain. They like, 
we've recovered what was happening, like just the openings in the holes now, phrasing. Uh, in the uh, mountain, uh, Canada's Wonderland. So, I don't know. I think all this is teasers in that actual survey. So, when it comes to the ride portions of like, hey, what do you think about these rides? I feel like it's like kind of a mix, mixed bag, because they they want to know what people think, but they may already be leaning a certain direction. Right. Oh god. It could also be that, say, the guest surveys show that they really would prefer something over another thing, and. Maybe they had it all wrong, and they were going to originally plan to do the first thing. Could work like that. I'm sorry for the wrapper crunching. Sometimes these bitches are hard to open. Oh, is that mold, bro? Yeah, bro. That looks like mold. Mold on. Bro, I'm so pissed. This was This shit was so good. It's moldy. It's fucking vegan chocolate bar. Tro vegan chocolate chip. They're an expiration date? Bro, they're like... I don't know. Bro. Just fucking... I'm tight, bro. That's all I know. I'm tight because my munchies got cucked. But, uh, it's cool, bro. So... Yeah, I think the last thing here is this flash vertical velocity, is all I can find. Uh, stuff that... Uh, it's actually been moving quite well from the vlogs I've been uh, looking at real quick. And Dark Coaster, doing so well of an investment that it only runs on weekends. Do better, United Parks. Do better. Yeah, I'm sorry. One of the worst tractions ever. It's not good. Um, oh, uh, Great Adventure Closures. Oh yeah, the Zumanjaro and Tango and something else is not opening this year. In fact, Zumanjaro has no signage, and people, when they look down at Ka when they ride it, they see that the gondolas are completely gone from the ride. So, which is like sad because I actually really wanted to ride that at some point. <laughs> that ride's good. It's not my favorite drop like, tower because you get like float, but it's still yeah. like insane because you're so high up. So. Love Lex Luthor, so definitely wanted to get on that one. Um, shoot, hold on. So, Sky High Coasters LLC has been oh, yeah. contracted to come work on Steel Curtain. And it looks like they are a company that works with the construction of rides, so... It, and they have a track record with Gale Force and Orion. So, looks like they're finally fixing whatever is wrong with Steel Curtain. So, good. so you said they... Shout out to Joe Melba, by the way, giving this info. I'm glad that was Joe this week. Because <laughs> uh, Joe was a homie. But a company that erected Orion... So, made a shit giga and uh, fixed Gale Force. Is Gale Force. Uh, is, is, so, is right. Is Gale Force actually like, that good? Is that as far as I, I know, that it, from what it sounds like, they did a good job fixing whatever was wrong with it structurally. Like, I, don't, I don't know how elite Gale Force is, so. So, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, is, what's the ride that like James and Timmy said was good? Was that Gale Force? No, 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 no. I, I, or, shoot, what's it? Great Nor'easter. Is that what you're thinking of? Or am I tripping? Nah, it's the multi lodge, like SNS, or like. It's like on a pier. It's almost like a Gerslauer, but it's not a Gerslauer. Yeah, it might be Gale Force. And he said it was really good. Oh, let's see. I want to say I've heard people say Gale Force is good, so. Gale Force. Yeah, this is the ride I hear people say is good. Uh, SNS Launch. Okay, you know, 
if they've worked on an SNS before, and by the way, as this is Gale Force is another SNS that had structural issues. Wow, that's all I gotta say. That's all I have to say. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm I'm not getting an SNS closer coming apart. Um, and then we actually, I actually, had, we have a slight bit of praise for United Parks because they added theming to Loch Ness. Oh yeah, so shit, your homeboy like. Must have just been told to not tell anybody because they clearly have something for Loch Ness at the end. So, where do the fuck? Where where is this? Where did I put this? There's so much news we might need to go back two weeks because, bro. Oh my gosh. I think it was like near the end of all of this, but there's a few things wise. Yeah, so Loch Ness has something cool coming. I don't know if it's going to move, it's going to puff smoke at you, but it's clearly Nessie. We can visualize Nessie for the first time. How about that? These are these are just things that are appreciated. This, this is what we want to see. Yeah. No, uh, I actually want to write... Like, you're going to add something to pay at the honor, what? <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> Oh boy, maybe for Pantheon's 50th anniversary they'll add some theming. <laughs> God, they're gonna take probably more away to like. The thing is, if they add theming, I feel like that would actually help with the wind issues. That they. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I might tunnel. I might tunnel more wind in the areas. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, this looks really good. I can't wait to fully see this. This was three days ago, so... I don't know if people have been able to get on now. I think it was only the previews. And that the previews, there definitely was not... I think it was just tarp covered up there, so... Uh, yeah, that, that... I'm very excited for that, but... Apparently, Valley Fair is doing soil testing. Potential 2026 edition. They need it really bad. I'm just happy that Cedar Fair... It's finally given love to these young parks, but I hope it doesn't take them another 20 years for each of them. That's what I'm worried about. Like, <laughs> like they the gave, consistent. you know, like they gave them ZBZ Zinger last year. They gave Iron Man is this year. Potentially something for Valley Fair 2026, but is it going to take, you know, another whole two decades to make, actually get another, like, I just hope not, man. But speaking of which, uh, things are looking kind of good with uh six flags america because whole new whole new area yeah they're revamping um their whole area with six uh, with around a minor racer it used to be like a western area um yeah but now it is going full on steam town uh where the past meets future and yeah dates announced so basically that rip curl blaster is actually built now and uh is actually going to be able to ride it pretty soon if you really wanted to but um now we're going to look at this live our home park our home six flags now at the heart of steam town visitors can experience the very invention that catapulted me to fame steam Whirler stands as a testament to innovative spirit offering a thrilling blend of elegance nebulous or is that a, is it a different uh nope it's a nebula it's ass catching air as riders soar over its scenic the ride's intricate design featuring synchronized arms governed by a redundant central gearing system not only mesmerizes onlookers but also earned the coveted festive show <laughs> marking its place as a masterpiece in steampunk history. I'm not gonna lie. Now, at the heart I hate to admit town, that this whole this thing felt AI'd made. Now, not the renderings, <laughs> but the voice. I'm not sure that was an actual voice actor. <laughs> and. And the fact that it ended Bro. with us talking about Steam Whirler, like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I really wish I could talk. Like, they're doing something new for the park, and I'm still fu- But, bro, like, you're only adding- You got rid of, like, three attractions, and you're only giving us one? 
Well, I'm like, are they even getting like a brand new like raft ride, or is it just like a revamp of the one they already have constructed there? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. They're only advertising this, you know what I'm saying? So, but hear me out. You know the whole Willy Wonka debacle that happened where they used AI for like all the prompts, and it came out that that guy was an AI author and had like all these AI book like written books out and all that shit. When you do prompts yeah. like that, it's like they they. <laughs> It's almost like the AI sweats super hard the minute you ask for descriptive writing. It's like, like, listen to how it describes the nebulas here. Meshing arms. Seen well as four intermeshing arms. Each carrying a bright gondola. Spinning in a hypnotic dance. Catching air as riders soar over its ceiling. The ride's intricate design. Featuring synchronized arms governed by a redundant central gearing system. Not only recognizes oh. onlookers. But also earned the coveted festive show award, hmm. marking its <laughs> as a masterpiece in steam industry. It's just none of that it's felt like natural, bro. Such a yeah, no, I definitely, I, <laughs> definitely feel that. <laughs> I, I, God, I mean, and the reason I say that too, Six Flags literally used AI for their haunts, their haunt ads. They've used AI for their weird ads before, like so. It wouldn't shock me, essentially. Um, and the fact that that did not sound, or you could easily put in a prompt say, describe a flat ride that moves like with gears. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I just, I, yeah. But it, it's great that it's happening, I suppose. The, the new trains to minor racer should help it. I don't know if it's getting track work like Great Nor'easter. And I don't think Probably it's getting not. Um, I don't think it's getting um the lap bars either. It's just getting the best restraints, but it's still now it will be rideable. So uh rideable? Yes, it will be rideable. What do you mean? It's not going to be amazing, but it will be rideable. You gonna ride that? <laughs> I mean, I'll try it. Like, yeah, some new restraints. <laughs> like, Jolly Rancher Remix got saved, but I think they might have retracked that a bit. I'm not sure. But... <laughs> I think that's everything besides Florida now. So, oh no, actually, there's one more thing. So, they are doing something with their raft. Cause let me look at Ramar. I mean, this is a good thing to end on, so... I don't know why this isn't on their main page, to be honest. Okay, no. See, it's on Ramara's page. <laughs> the park president. And I'm going to fall on the high rollers. Appreciate you. Uh, they're going to be planning a lot of stuff, but no, they're going to be exploring new dimensions after years of research. Professor Screamore has pioneered oh. a time traveler, and riders will be experiencing an intense rapid Pre ride with a prehistoric twist. twist. Now, for me... I have no clue what drugs they did to say, we made a steampunk area, let's add fucking dinosaurs. Like, bruh. <laughs> but the fact that they are adding what appears to be animatronics is cool. You saw this, right? Yeah. They're actually seemingly adding, like, some big uh, moving pieces here. Uh, so. Um, this is so, that's so, but it's just like, so, like uh, just. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, theory. Which okay okay I'm, I'm just like where did these prehistoric animatronics really come from like which scrapped project <laughs> like and then they're just like potting it off to Six Flags America's like raft ride bro like <laughs> I swear bro so if you really want to get the true updates for Six Flags America guys follow Ramar <laughs> Six Flags America or Ramar SFA on X because he I honestly have not seen any of this. The main account is kind of ass. I'm not gonna lie for uh, Six Flags America. Go ahead and check out the park president. He's been trying, man. I I've seen it. I I've heard from him at the Ace event from Will when he was recording. It's hard for him to really get a lot done, man, because Six Flags be turning a lot of stuff down at Six Flags America. So you gotta for the fact he's able to do this and then actually put a theme to a raft, you know, at least build up the area somewhat. I really respect that, and always giving updates on the park too. It's like he's he's posting like basically every other day now. Um, at least now that the park's getting to a certain point of the year, so yeah, I 
Maybe there's some light. Maybe maybe there's not a, a red line for uh, Six Flags America. Maybe there's some hope. So they're even repainting the SLC. Oh, it yeah. looks like they're doing some paint work. <laughs> so, I, man, I, I, I'll try it again. Because like I said, the layouts for them aren't bad. They're just profiled like a, a toddler drew them with crayons. And, uh, like so, <laughs> you need if you just get reprofiling or get trains that track it better. Like yeah, like they're honestly good inverts. Uh, so, but yeah, seeing um all that the last thing, I think that was the last thing for everything was at Florida. To be honest, now. Florida, Florida, Florida coming up. Which, to be honest, most of it's universal, but uh, Penguin Trek has been testing. And I said earlier, Phoenix pa uh, Rising past member previews to start in June, because they erected that so fast phrasing, but it's true. Uh, it's literally oh, like... my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, last thing here. Uh, I I'm happy. I'm happy, Twitter. Thank you, Twitter side, for um, shitting on that homie for being a bigot. You already, I'm not going to say his name. I don't want to give any views to the Twitter or, or anything he has. Just know you all did the right thing. <laughs> because, uh, let me, that's what RC said before the cast when I told him about it. Uh, has that guy walked outside? <laughs> <laughs> has the, has you, have you lived life? Because you got to be in a bubble, bro. <laughs> And I'm sorry that it popped at King's Island, but my my man. <laughs> oh, man, he went on a tirade about saying DEI is ruining the theme parks. And that Selim Basul is the head ring leader for it all. Jesus Christ. Yeah, bro, I just wish that everything wasn't a conspiracy theory and, like, wasn't world-ending. Like, <laughs> We have actual issues that people are world ending with, and now apparently King's Island adding gay pride merch is the ball buster to end everything. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's just, like, laughable that dude is really, like, going on a tirade on Twitter about that. Also, the defenders, the defenders of that man, I'm sorry. If you think that Trump shirts and Biden shirts are the same... If you think picking a political party is the same as somebody being black or somebody... Being gay. We're, we're just going with the being gay part here. But so there's no choice in that. <laughs> in case you think... If you do think that, I'm sorry that offends you. You might not like this cast. But, uh... Moving on... <laughs> uh... To the Florida news. Where... Universal took the cake. But yeah, I think we covered everything. With, the Penguin Trek has been going on for, um... Uh, for quite a bit. And, like, testing-wise. It's been up for quite a bit. They were, they were sliding that, like, all the way, I think, like, literally in December. It feels like, almost. Uh, Pango Trek has been a great planning schedule. And then Phoenix Rising says, fuck you, we're going to get done in two weeks. Uh, which, both of them seem to be having their previews soon. I don't know if there's been anything about Penguin Trek previews. Uh, I don't think they've announced anything. Uh, does the... Say anything yeah people are asking about it they put a, they put up a phoenix rising like a lego set <laughs> Wait, what where no i'm saying they put up phoenix rising like a lego oh, set. Yeah, it, took for a, real. it took them like two minutes <laughs> no it literally looked like i was watching someone like they make those connect coasters or something and they're like you see their progress over like three weeks the months and it's like wow this looks great like that was literally what it felt like just looking at somebody mm -hmm. put together like a quick good kudos to them for that now i will say uh, we did cover it it does swing so i am curious now um it doesn't make it as redundant um it doesn't, in fact it's not redundant they said the swinging's good right so but yeah uh, i think that's all florida for the sea stuff universal took the cake i i don't even think disney was barely even in here uh, i'm gonna try to get disney in here to get it out of the way but when i tell y'all this Universal was showing how much they're fucking doing around, uh, around, uh, but they're getting ready for Epic. 
And they're and the shows are getting for all these stuff. Yeah, Disney was not on the cast as well. Oh, yeah, I, I, was, I was looking through all the links. I was now, like, I don't think we have I will say Disney. Disney <laughs> has been showing stuff for like the new fa- Fantasy Springs. I think that's in Disney Sea. Uh, that looks great, by the way. Um, looks really really good. But I'm gonna start at the bottom now. We're here first. Uh, just, just, just scrub, scrub there. So people on Troller Coaster. I'm pretty sure some cast members or executives got to try out uh, what it felt like to be on the new... Uh, I mean, I don't think the train changed, to be honest. They just changed the zero car and colored it. But right. uh, on on the new Woody's Woodpecker used to be now Troller Coaster from the Trolls. And movie. that's that's going to officially open June 14th. There's been a lot of progress, actually. I should have put, posted more because, like, Trek's Island is all the way up. Or not Island. <laughs> Trek's house is all the way up, and they have, like... Uh, oh! Yeah, I, okay. I, need, I need to uh, see. I'm, now that I'm looking at all of these links from Universal, like all of their teasers are starting to make sense, just with everything that's going to be happening in June and July. Why? What's happening in June and July? Well, just all of the different news pieces, all of the different mm. updates. Okay. So I'm going to look at Bio Reconstruct real quick. If you already know, Bio Reconstruct, one of the main uh, people you will look at for updates, pictures on construction around the florida specifically for universal disney uh but apparently scaffolding behind a support frame at up uh, upcoming epic universe preview center so they're going to be updating that yeah et has a new ride signage on the right uh wait does it is that et closet new i don't think so or is it coming like this is going to be a new i think it's gonna be Oh, a new one. Uh, yeah, ET. Yeah, apparently ET's closed right now, for like a week. So, yeah, and Trek's house is visible. <laughs> that's cool, bro. That's amazing. I didn't know how much I wanted to see Trek's house in real life. <laughs> now, please let me see Donkey. Bring Donkey back. But yeah. Wow, those rock work looking like Planet Coaster. <laughs> Alright, so um Yeah, yeah. So just going up, going up here, going all the way up, going all the way up here again. Rip Ride Rocket rumored to be gone, like oh, yeah. soon. Oh, there's one more thing we missed. Uh more chains need to utilize their fucking stadiums. Because oh, ludicrous, no, no, like that's the one thing United Parks does very well. They can just get these big, like it's specifically SeaWorld Orlando and like BGT, but like SeaWorld Orlando, man, like they'll just bring in these be getting big these, artists, these concerts. yeah, and, like and then people want to go to the park for that, and I'm like shit, like that is such good money. <laughs> I know Hershey kind of does that already, um, but more parks need to definitely get on that game. Like they have these amphitheaters just sitting there. Kings and Minion used to always have the Gospel Fest. They used to always have, like, um, Three Days Grace come down there, too. Like, uh, a Christian Rock Festival stuff. Yeah. I don't know why they stopped that. I remember that. that. Uh, yeah, I think it's a cool uh, thing, well, too. Well, and uh, Universal will get big turnouts, too, for their, their shows they do on studio side. Yeah, I don't know if they want to deal with mosh pits along with people throwing up on rides and heat stroke. Because <laughs> I remember there was like, it was like a definitely like, I want to say it was Hard Rock. Like, I thought, was it Nickelback? <laughs> I, well, I was like King's Dominion or something. I don't know, bro. I can't remember. But yeah, they're probably not going to worry about people drinking at uh, a show already walk around at the regional park where they most of the workers there are probably a teenager so <laughs> uh i don't know i think the culture that's might change for some of those parks but we'll see i like, i think it's a good idea to bring them back uh yeah but um Yeah, so Stardust Racers. What the fuck's with that? 
that is the question. And it says, like, providing an amusement park ride in the nature of a roller coaster ride on the, uh, like, what it's for. Now, something did come out. And, and then it... there's something that says Universal Brands sued by Starfall over new roller coaster name. Yeah. So, so. Uh, let, me, let me see. Is that another link? Um, yeah, 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 yeah I, I see the link. Shit, I'm not. Fuck. Blue, from uh, Bloomberg Law. But it looks like you can't actually access the link. So, I guess the Starfall brand may try to block this and they may have to change it to stardust no and I, I think what makes it funnier is that i think it's a school that has it if i remember correctly um let me yeah. check this up starfall name universal <laughs> yeah is infringing on starfall education foundation trademarks which i think people were looking at it they're not even a like, the school's defunct, I think? I, I, I'm not sure. Basically, it's just like... Fuck them kids! No, I'm just kidding, no. Um, <laughs> but seriously, how can a school do that? Because schools literally take logo, professional NFL logos for their mascots. Like, college logos for their mascots. No, I don't know. Uh, people are theorizing it's also for other Universal projects, too. Like a... Yeah potential clone or another they don't really make clones like that anymore to be honest uh but another star like racing ride coaster potentially a uk or somewhere else which i could see that to be honest all right um we're by the rocket what would you put there because i, I do think that its days are numbered um especially after looking at that video I give it like five more years, max, um, max, and I don't even think it'll make it five. I don't know what they could add in that in that plot. Oof. I'm saying, add a, t I I just want to see a tow coaster, but add a tow coaster, bro. Imagine like where the the drop is. For Rip Red Rock, and you have a tilt there. Someone else made a really good point, though. I, I there was other good, like ideas, but uh, basically people were saying like the mock Big Dipper that they just made with Voltron, because that obviously utilizes a lot of blocks, breaks. They can yeah, does a lot, and I think it's confirmed. Ensimin's working on uh. The Fast and Furious, but I'm not sure. That could be Mach. Who knows? Um, and if that's the case, that would make more sense too. Be like, hey, do this here. And if it works out here, we'll put uh, your Mach product in our... Uh, Mach product. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's very weird. But Super Nintendo Land, we got the first teaser for Epic Universe at least. Uh, I got... Mm. So when I first saw this, I didn't realize that DK Country was going to be its Inside, own you'll discover place. The most so let's look at this. You'll enter Super Nintendo World through the iconic green pipe. And once inside, you'll discover the most elaborate, interactive world we've ever created. Featuring Super Mario Land and Donkey Kong Country. When you come out on the second level of Super Nintendo World with that vista, there's just not another view like it. You have Mount Beanpole right in front of you. You have all of these color blocks, all of the characters moving around. This world is alive around you. So yeah, I'm like, this is clearly, obviously the biggest one. If they have, if they're able to make two separate areas for Super Nintendo uh, Land. And I don't think they're going to have, I mean, shit. I was going to say, I don't think they're going to have the capacity issues like they normally do. Uh, for the Super Nintendo worlds, or land, but I think this will still be the biggest hit in the park. Like this is gonna be the land most people will run to. Oh yeah, without a doubt. And yeah, I 
Person I, I don't think that it's going to be like extremely imbalanced, but this, yeah, without a doubt, this will be the most popular. Yeah, like I think you're going to see the most. Other mates than at other than this Wizarding one. World, other, yeah, other than Wizarding World. Now, I do think that won't have as much pulling power as the other two Wizarding Worlds, because those yeah. are literally like worlds that Harry Potter went to. This is more so Fantastic Beasts. That. That's um, true. All of that lore and everything. So, because Perry didn't go to Paris. At least I, I don't remember him going to Paris. Do you remember? Do you remember him stepping foot in wherever uh, that's supposed to be? But uh, well, they they've got the Ministry of Magic too, which is heavily featured in right. You know, actual Harry Potter, not just um, Fantastic Beasts. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, besides that, they're doing a lot of events. Um, they're doing DreamWorks Land is apparently opening officially June fourteenth. So why we're seeing a lot of the finalizing, uh, final touches come into that land. Sensational, sensational, should I say, is coming to Universal Orlando in June fourteenth as well. Uh, which I am happy they're finally doing stuff like this. I feel like it was a long time fucking coming, to be honest. But it's a thrill to a cinematic journey with steering soundtracks evoking the mystery and magic of Harry Potter, the pulse-pounding thrills of Jurassic World, and the gripping suspense of Jaws. Debuting June 14th, 2024, in select nights. But it looks like it's going to be essentially... What is that water, like, projection water show that Disney has at California's Adventure and stuff like that? Like, Um, a Happily Ever After? Yeah, stuff I like... That, um... Shoot, what's that? I think Happily Ever After is the fireworks show, but... No, they they've got. Oh shoot, I don't, I don't know. But basically, I'm surprised they're doing. They're just getting to doing shows like this at Universal. That was the one thing oh, I thought they were missing. Fantasmic, probably. No. So they do do water know. projection there, but there is another show that uses just water projection. Like it's in front of uh, Cal or, excuse me, Incredicoaster mm. now, uh, and like the the big wheel that's there. Um. Oh, like, World of Color. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Um, I'm hoping I was they thinking Walt Disney World instead of Walt, instead of Disneyland for some reason. But I'm also noticing there's fireworks with this, and this makes sense because they were testing pyrotechnics of like two months ago in the studio side. So yeah, I I'm shit. I do I think I'd have my pass canceled now because I definitely have not paid for the past two months. But I would love to go back to at least see this. And because I don't know how long it's going to last, but I hope they do yeah. keep it for a good time. Also on June 14th, they're debuting a new um, projection show on the castle and islands called Hogwarts Always. So, why is June 14th such a big day for them? Let's just do everything new on June 14th. A new land, a new show, a new projection show on two sides of the park. Yeah, no, I was kind of wondering the same thing. Like, jeez. And then July 3rd, a new Universal Movie Parade is coming, like... Yeah. Well, and the thing that, um... That, what, the one teaser tweet they had posted, that was what correlated with, uh... That July 3rd parade they're gonna be doing, I'm pretty sure, based on all the symbols in one of the, uh, teasers. Yeah, because... I mean, I'm just saying, on top of all of this, but studio side, Epic Universe, they get to ride DK Minecart Madness, which is the official name. DK Coaster. Oh, man. Uh, this stuff's looking good. Like, Florida is popping off right now. Uh, for real. And Starfall Racers... Or excuse me, not Starfall Racers. This is, uh... The, the spinning coaster everyone is confused about that's in the Dark Universe area. It had its first test that someone caught, and, uh... I'm not gonna lie, it looks kind of good. Looks like there's a quite a bit of spinning. Um, looks uh, very moderate. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm saying for the model, it's quite good. You know, I'm not yeah. saying it's gonna it's gonna knock your socks off or anything. But <laughs> I'm, I'm just laughing because like the the first comment I see on that tweet is from Wallet, and he's like, oh "I'll never stop wishing that this ride was just a little bit more." <laughs> It's like Wallen, like he is the most theatrical. Didn't need to be time traveler, but missed an opportunity to make something truly special. I'm like Wallen. Not everything needs to be 
<laughs> their kids need to write shit too bro like <laughs> I, I do agree there are certain parks that benefit more from adding thrill rides than family rides 100 percent. but we're talking epic universe here bro like this is for everybody you're gonna need that but i do find it weird that the dark universe area has this because it does look like the one of the smaller rides in the park and i'm not sure a lot of kids are gonna want to be i don't think it's gonna be scary for in dark universe but i don't think it's gonna be the first place uh, a lot of younger kids are gonna want to go so i think the placement of the ride is kind of weird but i don't think the ride's gonna be bad i think uh that's everything though i think that's all the fucking news <laughs> is indeed there is some things we'll always like miss one or two little things so but for the most part like, like, there was the previews for the Super Nintendo Land, but we ended up covering just Super Nintendo. And But, y'all, we got a tier list for you. So, we're going to do fast food because we're stoners. And we travel. And one thing that... One thing that you... When you travel and you try to get there, basically, yo like some fast food man yeah so you're trying to get there fast but then you try to also stop fast make quick but also has to slap man and that's why you get you, you get excited when you go to certain regions because they have certain foods and other times you're like damn i'm not a fan of any of this shit <laughs> or some places just have only chains and the chains you know we're gonna cover everything man so we're gonna see what you put together here you got basically everything to got, got a lot of options yeah did you put kadoba in here <laughs> oh, Kadoba's not on there, no. <laughs> it's the only thing I think that's missing, to be honest. But this is extremely good. Uh, yeah, we have literally everything all the way from the regular chains. You know, McDonald's. Shit, missing, missing fucking Bucky's, too. Okay. I got she I got sheets and Wawa with them, missing okay, Bucky's. You, then, Whoops. yeah, you gotta put Bucky's. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's Kadoba and Bucky's as a tourist. Yeah, we got everything here from McDonald's to Waffle House, Chuckers, Bojangles, CC's Pizza, bro. Like, we have <laughs> Subway on like here, pizza. Wingstop. Like, we got everything you can fucking imagine. All the chains, all the fast foods, all the places you would get. Some <laughs> quick eats real quick, either outside of a park or just on the way to somewhere, traveling to wherever. So, I don't know if you're posting another one, but... Hold on. I'll, uh... Well, let me just add the uh, buggies and stuff to it real quick, and then I'll just screen share. We All can right. Sort them. So, I'm going to come out here, guys. Most fast food? I don't know, man. In the past few years, it's. I don't think it's my stomach. It's, I can still tank it. But taste wise, most of it's not more than B, man. Now there probably will be some stuff that will end up being. I, I'm I'm actually very glad that you said that because I cannot agree more. Oh, okay, good, good because the fact that BCMP will put any fast food place like S, like maybe there's a few occurrences. Like, I we have to really look at this, but we also got to keep in mind this is fast food. Okay, so in terms of fast food, is this. <laughs> See, like, I'm, like, air quoting right now. Like, there's S-tier fast food because it's, like, really good fast food, but it's still fast food. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's still shit, but, like, it's, like, good. Okay, but, like, it's like when I said to Marcus at uh, the Dorney Media Day. Like, when, when you get some slapping Popeyes, because Popeyes are so fucking, it's a coin flip. When you get some slapping Popeyes, that is S-tier fast food. But it's, like... I can't put them in S tier because the amount of times you get that S tier Popeyes is like, mm, mm, it's not, unless you get some stoners at your Popeyes, bro, that really know how to cook it up. That's what I'm saying. You got to really got some people that care about putting together some fucking fast food, which 90% of the time, why would they care? You know, they're just trying to get their check. I get it completely. Bro. But the one times, like I'm saying, Little Caesars, we, if you get some slapping Caesars, bro, that's top of B tier. I hate to admit it. But let's get this started. Where would you want to start with? What can we 
that's that's what I'm saying. There's so much to unpack here. I don't even know where to start. So I'm just gonna go Wendy's. All right. That all is right. C. <laughs> they have Frosties. Their burgers and fries are good, not great. Uh, people like their chicken. They have good Wendy's deals. Is, and it's fair to eat here. And that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking of the. I think of everything. I'm not just the food. Like the deals now. If you don't go for the four for four there, which do they even still have that or the biggie bag? It, it, oh they my. still have those, yeah. If you don't go for those, you are paying so fucking much for that food, and I don't know. Oh what yeah, I, you you gotta get the the deals. Like a sure. Dave single is like ten bucks now. Like what? <laughs> what? Nah, bro. And I'm not the biggest fan of how they of their meat. It's not that season. Yeah. Like so. The fact I gotta you gotta slam that shit with the the ketchup mustard and and, and the onion like you gotta slam with that or you are getting a pretty bland cafeteria burger. Unfortunately, well, so. what what you, what you know about Roy Rogers? Oh my god! So I, I when I last remembered F, but F. I but like because <laughs> oh my god, that's like dog. I, I, food, I was gonna say probably throw it at like D tier, but like their chicken pretty, isn't pretty bad. Decent. But their their burger is, I probably wouldn't even feed that to my animals. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been like at least like six, seven years since I've had Roy Rogers. So I'm just saying, all the Roy Rogers in my area got replaced with either cookouts or. See, that's the like, thing. I don't, I don't get, I don't get that luxury. I still, I still got a few Roy Rogers hanging around. <laughs> Not that I've been, but shit, if they replace <laughs> them with a cookout, I'd be real happy. <laughs> But they're slowly moving up. I know Canes has been expanding heavy because I, I've been have, be able to have more Canes, which I guess we'll get out of the way. I'm throwing Roy Rogers in F two. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Like any Roy Rogers lovers in there can tell me what's good. I would love to know because, okay, okay. I'm a big fry guy. Are are you are you really? I I love fries. Like fries are fucking amazing. Um, that's like that's the best side. Yeah, come on now. Their For fries sure. are really good, actually. From what I remembered, so that might be enough to put them in D. <laughs> but... I'll keep them. I'll keep them D tier, because uh, I, I remember. I remember having it. I don't know. I feel like Roy Rogers was decent like six years ago. So, all right, let's let's run the bandit off the of Canes, because I think we have the same take with Canes. C- Canes has got to be A tier. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I thought we were there. We were just there, bro. Saying how it's so overrated. There's better chicken places. <laughs> Canes is still A tier though. Canes Bro, slaps. Okay, okay, hear me, hear, hear me out, hear me out. Canes has four fucking combos. They have four fucking items, and they still can't be consistent. And they don't have barbecue sauce. Their cane sauce is not good enough. I'm sorry. It, it's just it's 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 that that's what's overrated about this. This is true. I I guess how lenient are we being here with our rankings? That's that's what. I'll, I'll, put I'll put them in B. I'll put them in B because I'll, I'll if, you, fair, if you want chicken, B-tier. if you want to get some chicken, you're guaranteeing like it's it's decent chicken, right? And, it's, and, it's good chicken. And their fries are kind of shit, but the nah, toast. Hold on, hold on. The toast, bro. Look, speak, speaking of chicken, Chick Fil A really fell off. I'm not gonna lie, bro. They, you're they, saying they, that they changed they, they changed their chicken, bro. Wait, Chick-fil-A, what do you mean Chick-fil-A they changed, changed their chicken? Their chicken. Yeah, Chick Fil A has new chicken now. Wait, you, for real? Have you? Ha- yes. You, you didn't know about this? I I've noticed somewhat the qual. Like I feel like I've noticed it subtly, but didn't. I thought it was my yeah. my restaurants I was going to, but like I do feel like the the chicken itself when it's I like go is not in nearly Eastern, as good. In the Atlantic Eastern region or whatever, like they have uh, changed their chicken. What the now, fuck? Now I will now I will still put them in B tier. Don't get me wrong. No, so. It's Chick-fil-A. They're the most but... consistent on this entire list. Like, when you go to Chick-fil-A, you know what you're getting. Like, straight up. There's no guessing whether it's, like, a random Chick-fil-A somewhere. Like, you know the service is good. The price is consistent for the most part. You're not going to get butt-fucked by random dollar increases because I'm in Florida now. And, like I said, like, you you know it's chicken patty. You got Chick-fil-A sauce. The waffle fries are you know, not great. I mean, nothing is fantastic there. But you're getting at least, it can at least max to great. And you feel satisfied. Like, you just chicken. You know what I'm saying? Not my favorite chicken, but everything put together on top of their shakes kind of slap, too. Uh, And their sweet tea. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beats here for sure. Beats here. 
Uh, shit, let's get some of this pizza out of the way, bro. Like, uh, that, I'm, I'm sorry, Domino's. Like, <laughs> I want to put it in F, but I know it's probably D because, uh, like, I'm thinking of like the the price and her everywhere. Yeah. When you really need to eat, you will can you'll always find a fucking Domino's, and they're always like, open fucking I, late. I, I think like all all of the pizza ones are really about to go in D tier. Oh I'm yeah, not lie. I think <laughs> like, the only yeah. decent pizza chain is Marco's, and they're probably C at the max. Like, <laughs> like it really comes down to how you want to rank Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, and CC's. Now, I'll, I still put Little Caesars it, over all of those. I'll put Little Caesars in C tier. Really? Little Caesars? Like, you're getting $6 pizza, you know what you're getting. And it's still better pizza than all what we named. <laughs> I mean, Domino's is $6 pizza, too. Yeah, but why does it be tasting like... Why does why be getting some funky flavors from that shit, bro? Why like... <laughs> <laughs> like Domino's is the most inconsistent. Like I probably in this entire list, because when you get bad Domino's, that it's That's unedible true. sometimes. Do- Domino's is a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but when you get some good Domino's, it's C. It's C. Like, but like it's mostly honestly most of the time it's F tier. But for what it has and the fact it's laid out, it's laying out option. I'm gonna put a D tier. I think I think I'd have to put. I think it'd have to go Domino's, Papa John's, CC's, and then Pizza Hut. Yeah, but like Pizza Hut still is like, it's so greasy. <laughs> Pizza Hut's just, just not it. <laughs> I remember like loving going to Pizza Hut as a kid, like inside the sit down bar and all that shit. And... Oh, yeah, like a red, a red roof? Yes. Oh my gosh. That was, that was a vibe. But. Man, but I would you not see me sitting in one ever again? <laughs> uh, so sub places, I'm not really big on sub places, but uh, me, actually, me actually, do you have Pop Belly on here? I do not. So Pop Belly would be an A tier. I, I I would say that if it was on here, but I've actually heard good things about that, but yeah, I've never. Pop Belly is ever. very good actually, and they give you a big ass sub. They get the soups good there. They have good bakery shit. Yeah, out of all the sub places, but Firehouse is a close fucking second, I will say. Um, I, I've heard good. I think I feel like I've tried all four of these on here: Subway, Firehouse, Jimmy John's, and okay, Jersey can we just, Mike's. Okay, but... can we just put Subway in F? Just, just, just get out of the way. Like, I don't know what happened with Subway, but I will not step foot in there anymore, bro. Like, I, the, their ingredients just you look at it when they're putting it on. It's like. This is not fresh. I'm sorry. This is just not fresh. Like, oh, no. I- I'm good. I'm good with that. Yeah, Subway is bottom think, of the bottom of the barrel. Firehouse should be up in the C tier. I could almost put a B, but I don't think they have enough sides for my liking. So, Because like, I would put the put... stuff like where I would put Potbelly in B and almost A is because they literally have good ass sides. Honestly, Potbelly would be A. Yeah, and then like I feel like I remember Jersey Mike's being pretty decent ish, and then I I don't really have too good of a recollection of Jimmy John's to be honest with Jimmy, you. Jimmy Jimmy John's is barely C, <laughs> and Jersey Mike's is high C. Like it's a solid sub. Not gonna knock. It's not gonna blow you away at all. Like I'm not getting stoned and being like this is so fucking good, unless I'm like <laughs> literally having eight in twenty four hours like. I'm not gonna turn to Action Bronson just because I ate a Jersey Mike sub. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, what 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 kind of category should we pull from from the rest of the list? So, should we stick with burgers? Should we go? So we haven't done just done strictly. Well, we did Wendy's, I guess. So I guess might as well go back. No, I see Panda. What are your okay. thoughts on Panda, bro? Pa- Panda Express is like. I would put it C tier on this list. So I say that because this can be inconsistent. But when you get it, good. I've had some really smacking Panda Express. No, it's almost <laughs> it's almost S, bro. <laughs> like I'm like, like, oh my god! I'm, I'm talking like actually going to a Panda Express, like not yes. like one in the park. Like I've had some smacking Panda Express. No, too. I'm saying like it can. It has some high highs, man. Like that. Oh my, I'd be mouth watering. Like I would be licking all that orange chicken sauce. Oh man, 
But yeah, I, I normally get double. I get the bigger plate all the time. Double oh, chicken yeah, and sure. the uh, or triple whatever. The double chicken and the lo mein, chow mein or whatever. Oh my gosh, yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't know, Panda. If they weren't so inconsistent, like like they would be in B, but they have to stay high C for now because yeah, they're yeah. solid. You can't go wrong. And honestly. I still think they're better than a lot of at least my local Chinese options, which is kind of sad. But I just, I just do not have do not have good Chinese around me. I, I need to they need to step it up. Let's uh let's go gas stations. Oh yeah. We got Sheets. We got Wawa. We got Bucky's. Is that is that the three that's on there? Yeah, I only got those three. Well then. <laughs> well then, honestly speaking. Uh, they might be some of the highest on this entire fucking list. <laughs> like, Bucky's is ass tier. Like, can we? Can we not? Can we just get that out of the way? <laughs> so, this is unfair because you can't get gas at these other places. So it's like the amount of options you can. So Bucky's doesn't have as many options as Sheets. Well, okay, they might have as many options as Sheets, but not as Wawa. Wawa has almost too many now. And that's kind of at their detriment, which I'm going to get to. But Bucky's, man, like, quality over quantity. And, like, so many pumps, you never have to worry about it. You get so many fucking snacks there. It's insane. So much jerky there. It's so good. But Bucky's is 100% at the top of this list. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely us here. I'm sorry. Sorry, appreciate you. I'm going to tweet this with my Bucky's hoodie. I don't care. Um, uh, Wawa? Yeah, I'm going to... I'd, I'd, I'd ride it B tier, personally. So B it would have been A a few years ago when they had less options. But they got they fucked up when they started doing burgers. I was like, what, what are y'all doing? I'm like, y'all were like the healthy alternative. Like, and then they started doing everything. Like they're doing pizza now. Pizza, yeah, yeah, I'm like, you, what, you're like now to me, I see them as shitty cheats in terms of like y'all were like the clean alternative. I didn't. I felt good when I ate their food. Now I'm like. I don't necessarily no, just feel like that you're, way. you're just it's it's just yeah. No, because seriously, when I get Wawa, exactly. it's like the same feeling now. Like I feel kind of yeah. greasy and gross. Yeah. So, like especially with like the quesadillas. Oh my god, they've got sheets. Right. Sheets and Wawa both both fly in B tier. I, w- I wouldn't even put sheets A tier anymore. Yeah, sheets. I, it's it's I, I hate to. It's just dirty food, bro. Like, but it's, it's and good so you for can't what it is, spam it. But, but so like when we were yeah. spamming it. That that is we oh, forgot what happened at Waldemir, but we got the sheets for sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh my, like I think every single one of us after we had sheets, we literally went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that was at Waldemir too. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Oh, Panera Bread. What are your thoughts on that? I'm not gonna lie. I put I put Panera Bread B or C tier. So maybe maybe C tier. I would have put them B tier a few years ago. <laughs> I guess it might be a recurring trend, but they were dumb and just got rid of the front take of chicken. They brought it back, but then they brought it back for like without the deal that they always had. We used to get the front take of chicken full and a soup. Now I gotta pay ten bucks for a small ass soup side, bro. Like, I gotta pay 20 bucks when I go to Panera Bread just for, like, a regular meal. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, y'all, y- oh, nah, nah, nah. That, that, that pricing is fucked up, but the food is good. I don't feel shitty when I go there. It, like, it feels good. And the front take of chicken slaps. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, they have this, yeah. like, um, they have this other one there, too. Like, this they have good smoothies. Uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put it, like, right with Panda. Yeah. Yeah. It seats here. Alright, KFC uh shit. Uh, just, just just put that just put that in. Put that in F tier. Let's get let's get some of the shit out of here. Del Taco? Have you had Del Taco? Yes, I have had Del Taco. I don't Actually, know why their fries are kinda of, kinda of, kinda of like Del Taco. Yeah, I don't know why their fries are good. Uh they're really dirty, in my opinion. Like it's definitely uh heavy and greasy. But they're good. Could, could I hang them like top of D tier maybe? I feel Honestly, like... I could put them in Z tier. Like they're better than Taco Bell, but but hear me out. I'm gonna put Taco okay. Bell. Okay. Probably where, in high where? C tier or maybe B tier. <laughs> I could argue for C tier. Like, 
hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Taco Bell and Del Taco, like, they're just, like, so convenient. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Like, they're a late night option, and they're, Taco Bell's getting there, and, and like, they're kind of losing that cheap. But you can still be cheap if you go to, if you know exactly what you're getting at Taco Bell. Uh, use the app, for sure. Yeah. Um, gotta get the gotta get the, the deals. Okay, IHOP. D. IHOP kind of kind of fell off. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know, man. Like they're doing all these weird minion shit and fucking marketing <laughs> shit. Like, and it's not good, bro. And like their main food is not good. Like you have to stick to their breakfast items, in my opinion. Yeah. And that just leaves out Gotta a whole half breakfast. of the fucking niner. Now Waffle House is C. Um. I would agree. I'd yeah. put that over IHOP at this point. Now it, that's very location based too. Now you can you can get some terrible Waffle House, but I've had recently better Waffle House meals than IHOP. Denny's uh, probably probably like D tier. Yeah, it's shit. I hate to say it. It's probably better than IHOP now. <laughs> Which I would not say that like ten years ago, but here we are. <laughs> uh, but it's really the pricing because IHOP is not that cheap anymore unless you go straight up like pancakes simple yeah. shit um then like you're looking still at like cheap. going out to eat prices for ihop kind of compared to denny's for sure so this one's gonna be a hot button uh chipotle and moe's and Cadoba. uh chipotle a tier oh no oh, chipotle is so good Chipotle is, Chipotle is so good. So, this is like the most polarizing... <laughs> you have people that love Chipotle so much, and I'm like, you have people like me, where I'm like, any other burrito option is better than Chipotle. See, like, I, I have the perception of Chipotle that it's just like, so clean and good and fresh. I don't I don't know why I have that perception, but I, I really like Chipotle. Well, you know why? Reason. Because they give you only, like, four fucking ingredients on their fucking burritos. No, I see, I get, like, a big-ass burrito bowl. That's my thing. Oh, that's the thing, too. You gotta get you double protein. And even then, I'm, like, shrug- I'm like, bro, why am I... It's like, I'm paying for, like, almost 15 bucks for my bowl when I'm paying 12 maybe, for my Moe's one. 13 for my Cadoba one. And I get, like, six or seven or eight different things in the bowl, bro. Like... See, and then the other thing is I don't have any Moe's near me. Yeah. I don't think I even have a Cadoba near me. Yeah, and you used to get the quesadillas at Moe's only. <laughs> mm-hmm. And those kind of kind of got a little over, Bruh, overdone the for The burritos me. at Moe's? I still think, like, if you get a burrito from both, from all three of them, that is the best at Moe's. If you get a bowl, it might be better at Cadoba, actually. But, like... <clears throat> I kind of shut on Chipotle a little bit. They're good. I just wish I had more customization options like the other places. And they are a bit more expensive. Um, and they do short me on the fucking Chipotle protein. Chipotle's pricey. They definitely short you on the protein. Fuck it. We'll just put all of them in, in high B. Like, the high is a B. Because, like, honestly, that's my favorite type of fast food. Is, like, the burrito bowl places. Or I get a big burrito. Can, can we go ahead and... So, cook out. Wait, so you gotta, I, you gotta swap it, I think, because I think highest goes closest to the B. <laughs> uh, see, I don't, I don't know that I wanna, I don't know that I wanna put those three above the, the other four. For real? Nah, bro, come on, bro. <laughs> okay, Ch- Chipotle's <laughs> definitely better than Chick-fil-A. Moe's is definitely better than Chick-fil-A, bro, like. I, I, I'll side with you, it's cool. Sheets. <sighs> Fuck. Okay, now I'm thinking. I'm out, I'm out of food. Fuck it. We're, we're keeping that. There. We have Bucky's at us here. That is still troll enough. Uh, cookout. Where's Where's cookout going? Put that. Um, it's, it's, it's got to be A tier. I was like, put that in A. Actually, uh, see, I was thinking cookout and Five Guys in A tier. Five uh, Guys yeah. would would be S tier, but it's too expensive. Yeah, and that, look, I will say people look at Five Guys wrong. People look at Five Guys and compare it with, like, McDonald's, Taco Bell, and, like, like what are you doing? I like how you don't even have BK in here because you just forgot how trash it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's right <laughs> Oh, I see it. Never mind. So, I do have one thing to say about BK, but before I get to that, Burger like... Burger King should go in F tier. <laughs> but Five Guys, like, 
they aren't they aren't that they're made they're food made fast not fast food like you go in there and you ask for the burger and then you see that burger be made if i go yeah. to wendy's if i go to burger king they are that burger was already made mcdonald's already had my burger made that's why they are fast food not food made fast so from that take oh we're missing shake shack i guess too but that's the one we're actually missing but i would take oh, shake shack oh, <laughs> Uh, but it's yeah. funny. I, I thought about adding Shake Shack too. Well, if we're adding five guys, I thought it would only be fair. But personally, yeah. uh, they're overrated. People love them, and I'm like, eh, they're okay. All right. Now, while we're talking burgers, I, I gotta say I respectfully would put both Whataburger and In and Out in A tier. Yes. Uh, now, Cookout. I was gonna tell you that reasons price, man. Nine bucks and I get that much fucking food and it's made in front of me? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, do I need to say any more? Like, wh- why can't I get entrees as sides? Why can't I? Why is it only a dollar more to add a full shake with 40 different flavors and I can mix and match the flavors? I'm sorry. Cookout is the, is the goat. Like, it's the best. I And whoever my cookout is has fucking Spongebob in there because he <laughs> flipping patties so fucking fast. Them, and it's burning in my hands when I get that out of the fucking box, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> cheddar style, double cheddar styles is like a guilty pleasure for mine. Like, I could go right now, bro. Dude, I, I, right I miss cookout. Oh, my gosh. I bro, need some cookout. Yeah, cookout, that, that's the reason. Nine bucks for all that food. Like, And you feel full. It's not like the fake, like all the preservatives and all the empty calories you're getting and a lot of the other fast foods, like McDonald's and... I literally feel so full after you cook out. And that's what it's another recurring theme of these family owned ones, or at least we're family owned. Like In N Out, I feel full. Whataburger, 100%. Oh my God, I love Whataburger. I was so happy it held up, man. The fact that they only have mustard on it, like it's a pretty minimal burger, right? Like it's just mustard, lettuce, mm-hmm. onion, uh, and mayonnaise. And the burger's really fat. Like it's really <sighs> wide. Oh my God. God, it's so fucking Dude. good, and the fries are good. Oh my god! Now I'm sitting here thinking about what a burger, spicy ketchup. Right, <laughs> yo, uh. yo, like, I just think all the family-owned ones clearly are superior. At least what a burger isn't family-owned anymore, but they know what they're doing. They're not expanding all over the fucking place, spreading their uh, resources thin to where the point they have to cut costs. Right, what a burger and cookout. I think they get it. Especially because Cookout is very, they're very, like, iffy on who they get as a franchisee, I've heard. Like, it's hard to become a franchisee for them. So, yeah. Um, um, have you had Culver's? I actually haven't, but I've heard good things about Culver's. Isn't that the butter burger or whatever? Yes. I, I've only had it one time, and it was, like, uh, well, like, within the last year. I, I would honestly put it B tier. Oh, wow. It's good burgers. For sure. It's like, I was like, how, how exactly is the butter on him? Like, did they literally spread butter on a burger? That's just weird. No, I don't. I think it's just like buttered buns or something. Mm. Well, I don't remember what exactly I got. I remember it being high quality, though. Well, let's say something that used to be high quality but isn't anymore is uh, Sonic. Boy, did their novelty fall off. Don't, they, they literally don't even have people skating anymore because there's too many people don't know how to skate and just fall. And <laughs> too much liabilities, bro. Yeah. But Sonic, for me, they're deets here because their food is just not good. But their sweet side, which is a whole other section of their menu, really, it is really good. Um, but I would put that beats here, guys. Fair. But their main that, entrees are... Ah, Sonic. Their chicken is terrible. I'm sorry. This is... I don't know what they get for it, too. Like, I think Wingstop and Sonic traded places because I would have said Wingstop had... They killed chicks and gave it to people because that's literally what it was when I got Wingstop <laughs> when it first came out. But recently, I've gotten some pretty decent-sized wings, actually, from there. So, You know, I, I kind of think Buffalo Wild Wings kind of fell off. I'm not oh, yeah. Lie. Oh, yeah. It's pretty... And I'm, I didn't really have the greatest experience when I tried Wingstop. Yeah, Wingstop is high D. I would have put them in F before, basically. Um, but Buffalo Wild Wings is low C now. Like, you can go there with the with the brothers and sisters. 
you know, get some drinks, watch some games. It's a nice place to convene, and it's not too bad, but it is getting expensive. So I, that's why it has fallen off. Not only is it pricier, uh, the chicken is just not as good anymore. Yeah, it's really not. No, I do, like when I say when your sauces, when your when your sauce is the main reason I'm eating the chicken. That's not good chicken, and that's basically me with canes. And I still think the canes has overrated. So that's whole I'm whole stick with canes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at, we're getting down to nitty gritty here. Um, have, have you had Carl's? See, I think some of Carl's these, and Hardy's some, are the some same, of these right? last ones. Some of the last ones I have not. I don't have too much experience with. Carl's and Hardy's are basically the same, just like Riley's and Checkers in that sense, in my yeah. opinion. So, like, uh, l- low C. Not great Sticky. at all, but not bad. Now, Checkers, Carl's though. Ooh, this might I be remember a hot Checkers take. being pretty decent. This might be a hot take, but. Che- doesn't Checkers have pretty good fries? I'm not about... tripping. So, they're, to me, they're mini. They give me. They're, like, almost slightly shittier cookout. They have a lot of options. Their price is good, but you're going to be paying a little bit more for more shit. Uh, but they're open late them, as like, fuck. Like this area. But they are dirty ass food. Like, they are. <laughs> like, when you get the fries, you can literally taste, like, sweetness and, like, almost funnel cake ish and, like, the fries. Like, that is some not healthy food at all. <laughs> but it tastes fucking good. And it's pretty cheap. Uh, speaking of that, Jack in the Box. Uh,. It used oh, to be yeah. a that, stoner's that paradise, which I still consider it that, but it's harder to find one nowadays. Uh, their quality has dropped off, but the the matter of the it, fact Jack is, the fire. matter of the fact, you get so many fucking options, and they actually do them good, like decent to the most. I'd, I'd oh. say what high, high C tier with like Del Taco. I'm just saying, taco, yeah, I'm just saying, two dollar four tacos is it's broken. I'm sorry, like <laughs> that's just it's too good, like. Ultimate cheeseburger, bro. They get, you can get sh- fucking uh, egg rolls there. Like I, I love that place. Like after Carowinds, I always go there. Always go there. All right. So what's this one here with the burger fry PNG? Oh, the, that is that is Dairy Queen. <laughs> what the fuck does that look like Dairy Queen at all? You can't see the little DQ. Oh, I, I can't because the screen's small on my screen, but. If it's there, uh, then I think yeah, Dairy Queen's uh, underrated. I don't Dairy, think they're Dairy great. Queen is actually, actually pretty good. Like, the chicken tenders and fries, and you get toast, and you get a blizzard, it is yeah. expensive now. Uh, but I would definitely put them high C tier, in my opinion. Like, they're pretty good. But they're not... <clears throat> I'm not going to go there all the time. Yeah, above Wendy's for sure. Not not all not right. style, but... What do we think about Burger King? <laughs> so there's only one good thing about Burger King. And this might be the hottest take of this whole cast right now. But they might have some of the best fries in fast food. Their fries alone. But everything else, dog shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie. The last, last time I had Burger King, I even thought the fries were trash. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason, whenever I get them here in this area, bro, they're always I always have to wait for my fries. That's the one thing I'm waiting for. And they're always piping hot. Always salted. And always, like, busting from the brim. Oh, yeah. They just threw some old-ass ones in my bag the last time I got Burger King. I'm telling you that, right? <laughs> but I'm just like, that's from my BK experience recently. When I leave and just get fries. Like, I, I don't even go to McDonald's. Because they're so inconsistent that I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go to BK. Because they always give me fresh fries. <laughs> Man, I'm just like, damn. That's the only thing I will say, but unfortunately, that is not good enough to put them in uh, anywhere else but F. Their prices are fucked up. Their food is fucked up. And I, I besides the fries, I guess. And yeah, I just. Yeah, I, I, I have no clue. I don't like the chicken. I don't like anything from there. Uh, now, their breakfast does, is good, though. <clears throat> does McDonald's also fall in F tier? We think it. McDonald's D-tier. is. Hear me out. Lowest of C tier. Lowest of C tier. They're not. No, they're the probably the shittiest tasting of all the C tier. But you can't. When you need to go somewhere, you always have McDonald's. You can always get the their app is probably the best app for deals. You can get so the much f- food. The food is just really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like 
yeah, basically in that sense, you can almost always rely. If you're hungry, just go to McDonald's. And then you, everyone has whatever their favorite is, unless you just really hate everything there. Uh, I can, for me, I don't mind a lot there. Like, my favorite thing to get there is probably the Quarter Pounder. But even then, I'll notice a lot of times the bread will be stale on the Quarter Pounder specifically. I'm like, how? why does that happen? Um, <clears throat> the Big Back's not bad. And the filet fish is probably my favorite thing. But they, I guess the fish is harder to get, so that's a little bit pricier than it should be. But with the deals, it makes it, like, the app really saves you a lot. You can get a lot of food for, like, 10 bucks. Uh, like RC said, literally, it, we're getting the lowest grade tier food here, so. Uh, last five here. <clears throat> and they're all chicken, besides Arby's specifically, but... <coughs> But so we'll get Arby's out of the way and then just do the chicken gauntlet. Chicken man. Hot, hot, hot take, Arby's. Arby's all right. So I, I do think there was a point in time where they were clearly F. Um, now, they are probably right underneath McDonald's, maybe, or maybe high D. I, Arby's, Arby's got the curly okay, fries. Well, you, you know what puts them in... You know what puts them <laughs> above Buffalo Wild Wings, actually? Right underneath Waffle House? <laughs> They're orange cream shake that they do seasonally for the summer, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is the only time I go to Arby's. It is so fucking good. It is so fucking good. I, but I literally would get it with, like, a brisket, and they'll put, like, onion like uh, onion rings on it, and their curly fries. That's a good meal. I feel full. Um, The brisket's not bad at all. I'm, it's, I'm just kind of surprised because it's fast food brisket, but... Ne ne never really thought their roast beef sandwich was, like, terrible either. I, yes, I know people was, like, like the roast beef. Easy. I know people like the Reuben. So, there was a point in time where it was disgusting. Uh, but I think they've somewhat changed to not be disgusting and just be, yeah, we make dirty food, man. You know what I'm saying? We're fast food. <laughs> so, I think they, that stigma is still lingering, but they're, they're the, not. The curly fries slap. Yeah, yeah they're curly. Oh, my God. They are really fucking good. They Especially if you get like some hot, hot, fresh yeah, curly fries. Yeah, bro, and they give you a lot. They give you a lot. So the chicken, the battle of the chicken men here. We got Popeyes, Final Four, Zaxby's, Churches, and Bojangles. So there's one item that's gonna make one of these so much more inflated in where I want to put it than it should be. The the best is definitely Zaxby's. Yeah, um, 100%. Uh, put that in eight here, please. Um, <laughs> uh, they, so I was like, that is the best chain place for chicken. I don't know if anyone needs to get that through their skull. But clearly, Cane's is not even close. Like, Zaxby's is like, it, I get it, it takes a long time. It does. But that shit is glistening and br golden brown, bro, when you get that. Oh, and I can get wings there. Oh, my God. Oh, oh when no, Zaxby's is, is the shit. It, it, it's so good. Bull Jingles, close second. I would put that uh, right above Kane's, actually. Uh -huh. Um, and that's just because they're not the consistency. Like all these places struggle with consistency, <laughs> honestly, and their operations are fucking awful. So that's why Chick Fil A will probably be the highest of like, besides Zaxby's taste just being that much better. But, um, yeah. So. Bojangles is good, bro. Like I, I well, when you get some good, and their breakfast is amazing. Yeah. Uh, where, where did you put the Popeyes? Where the... <laughs> I'm geeking, bro. Did you see what I just did? <laughs> I just, I just created Popeyes. And it gets a tier of its own. <laughs> uh, bro, it's like I kind of want to do that because, like, when you get to bad Popeyes, it is catastrophic. <laughs> The, the ramifications. But the thing <laughs> is, on the opposite end of the spectrum, when you get to Popeyes, it is some of the best fast food that you've ever had. So, I I, I don't know if I can put it in its own tier, bro. I feel like it, it needs its own, like, tier in, like, the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what would work out. And then for churches, just put honey butter biscuits. Because <laughs> churches, in my opinion, is shitty canes now. But... They have barbecue sauce, and their honey butter biscuits is the one of the best fucking sides in fast food ever. I will go to churches whenever I see one, 
out of states and just get 12 honey butter biscuits. I will take them on my flight. <laughs> I do not care. They are so fucking delicious. Delectable. I am sucking the fingertips. I do not care. <laughs> yeah, Popeyes and then put honey butter biscuits under over Popeyes. Uh, for churches. <laughs> so you said add another row. Yeah, and just call it honey butter biscuits. And that's and that's the tier list. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling y'all, if you ever see your churches, there it's hard to find one now. The chicken is I. Might be kind of even shit, but the honey Bro, butter key. fucking biscuit. Oh my god. Like I I'm literally like standing up right now. Oh. Bro. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. Th that's the cast. Oh shit, I didn't even I didn't even read it. Are you taking a picture of it? Yeah, yeah, I, I said to I sent the uh screenshot of the finalized. Um Alrighty. Let me get Tear Maker. I can't even get to that now. Okay, show sure, shit. Sure. So y'all, I was a goober and uh completely forgot to uh say the actual tier list for y'all. So here we go. Uh, the mic's gonna sound slightly different, but uh, sorry about that. But on S tier, we got the Beaver, Mr. Bucky. But uh, A tier, and this is all going in order from greatest to least at this point. So uh, Bucky, the only being the only S tier there. Uh, in A tier goes down to Cookout, <clears throat> Five Guys, What a Burger, In and Out, and Zaxby's. The B tier will go Chipotle, Moe's. Kadoba, Chick fil A, Bojangles, Raisin Canes, Sheets, Wawa, and Culver's. Uh, after that, we got the church tier, just the honey butter biscuits. <laughs> the Popeyes tier, which is Popeyes, it's because. Man, uh, you just, the, the biscuits are that good. I, I'm letting y'all know, but for real. But Popeyes, that, it's that inconsistent, man. It's that inconsistent, but. C tier, that's where most of fast food uh, is. Uh, but Pan Express, Panera Bread, Jack in the Box, Del Taco, Taco Bell, Dairy Queen, Wendy's, Checkers, Little Caesars, Firehouse Subs, Jersey Mike's, Jimmy John's, Waffle House, Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, Carl's, Hardee's, and McDonald's. Then in the D tier, we got Wingstop. Domino's, Papa John, CC's, Pizza Hut, Denny's, IHOP, Roy Rogers, and Sonic, and finalizing, <laughs> funny, with the F tier, Burger King, Subway, and KFC. Honestly, everything after D, I was starting to get sick, just thinking about. <laughs> but y'all, yeah, that was the list. We're going to be posting it on the socials, definitely. Keep a look, see what you think, uh, give us your thoughts on that. We'd love to hear it. Uh, but y'all, thank y'all for tuning in this shit post here, cause, for real, yeah, <laughs> I'm really curious what y'all fast foodies are gonna think about this. <laughs> we, we are. I'm clearly... just prepared to get like some some someone's gonna get on my ass, get on our asses about Bucky's oh, being at the shit. top. <laughs> There's one more thing we need to cover, actually. The fucking uh, the fucking uh. What you call it? Are the polls for our theme park draft. So, Instagram cooked the shit out of me. Because, uh, what you call it? I mean, let me get to this real quick. Yeah, they cooked the shit out of me as, um... When we did the votes and put it up there for our park, um, drafts, y'all, uh... Y'all were a very big fan of RCs, to the point where, um, where was the score? What's the score here? Oh, uh, RC won 80-20. <laughs> Let's see who voted for who. So, I don't even think it shows the votes anymore. That's, oh no, I might show it, um, if I go back. Really? I swore. Okay, no, it's right here, it's right here. So, 
<laughs> so if you guys forgot, RCs was Voyage, Haggard, Swiss the Cyclone, Raging Bull, Monsu, Riguru, Napuku, Air Coaster, uh, Raging Spirit, Jaguar, and Firebird. My park was Hyperion, Lost Coaster, Mamba, Iron Menace, Mind Blower, Cobra's Curse, Giant Dipper, Supersonic Odyssey Roller Coaster, <laughs> Pony Express, and Star Chaser. And Instagram said, basically, if you have Voyage, uh, you win, because RC won 80-20. I, I just like I think it's funny that it came down to the battle of not wanting Firebird at the end. <laughs> I was just like, screw it, I'll take another B and M floorless. This is like, bro, fuck Firebird. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so eighty twenty, y'all cooked me for sure. Uh, let, yeah, for, let, me, let, me, let me look at who voted here. So who voted for me were uh only two people so alex and uh brian so shout out to y'all shout out to y'all. everyone else uh tpj or uh, tp underscore underscore j uh gavin phillips so your boy our boy gavin man voted you airtime mike basically told me he said if it's voyage i'm sorry you know uh, i just gotta put voyage uh meg uh hurt my heart but votes for you jed votes for you i miss you jed hope you're doing well uh clt coasters uh voted for you vic <laughs> Yeah, Vic and Beard. Yeah, they all voted for you, so yeah. But it's uh, the Twitter side. A little different. Twitter side. Actually, 75 to 25% my favor. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck, man. I, there's clearly some weird different audiences. Like, we have some, clear, some different preferences on Twitter that follow us. And I just find that very interesting. That Lost Coaster hype, I'm telling you. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, that Lost Coaster threw people off. Lost Coaster and Mamba carrying. Nah, y'all. Thank y'all for all the appreciation, the love, the past few eps, especially on the Coaster Heat episode I was on recently, man. We talked about Iron Menace, uh, all the bullshit happening, and just, just chatting up, because like I said, if you want a more, just straight up, we're just bullshit my conversation. I mean, we kind of already do that with here, but... Literally just talking about random topics. Just check out, check out Coaster Heat, man. I'm on there a good bit. Uh, I'm trying to get back, get them back on here to cover up uh, and just be up here. But damn, that's going to be a chaotic, chaotic episode because we already do three-hour apps just by ourselves. <laughs> uh, so, y'all, love and appreciate all the support. Go ahead and follow us on all of our socials at uh, on Instagram first, at the High Rollers DMV, uh, and then follow RC. At Old Line Airtime. And go ahead and follow me at West Howard Coasters. And then you can follow us on the Twitter side. I'm never going to say, completely call it what it's supposed to be called because, uh, fuck Elon Musk. But, uh, go ahead and follow us at the High Roller C. And follow me at West Howard C. Y'all, it's been a doozy. Another three hour app. Y'all seem to love these, though. So, uh, and the news, he's just popping, popping. So. Take care. Stay homey out there. Never know who you meet in this silly ass hobby, man. Peace out. Peace. I'm an idiot and disconnected from the call. It's the end of the recording.